This meeting will come to order. Let the record show today is May 22nd, 2019. The time is 9 o'clock a.m. I wonder if I might impose upon the Honorable Councilor Smith to give us the Pledge of Allegiance. The flag is over here on the left. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. to the agenda. Um, nor do I. Where's Meredith? She's that way in the kitchen. kitchen. I'm going to ask Meredith to switch and put the amendments to the agenda after audience introductions. I just think that's weird that we do amendments to the agenda and then and then audience introduction, but it's kind of bugged me for a while. Uh, well, I'm relieved. Yeah. Because that was really, really important. Yeah. Audience introductions. We'll start in the front row to the south side. Jackie Hobby, Kesha K, Planning and Zoning. South side to the back side. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie B with Sentinel. Go ahead, sir. Ron LaVar. Janet Elliott. Sandra Garrett. No, Mary. Ronnie Gifford. Matt Gifford. Welcome, all of you. Nice to have you here. How are we doing down there, kiddo? Good. Okay. Need any clarification? No, I'll get them later. Okay. All right. <laughs> they went kind of fast. Yeah. They, <laughs> they can't write that fast. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't that spell it. Pardon? <laughs> so you can record that fast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, welcome. Thank you. Hey, Approval of the minutes. I don't there would be right. approval of the minutes if I would have remembered to send them out. Oh, I've got. That's not a him. Weird. I got April 17 minutes. Did we? Yeah, we did that. We stuck that, that in we this week for something. This would be the, the end of the. Um, yeah, May 6 and 7. I don't know why I stuck those in there, but I did. If you want me to move to approve them, we can. <laughs> I think we already did, I hope. Uh, Commissioner Items, Commissioner Prince, would you like to begin, sir? Um, on February 8th. Louder, please. I'm uh, sorry. On February 8th, attended the dispatch workshop on February 9th. Wait, February? I'm sorry. May. I've been in the past. What can I tell you? That's right. That's Snow. Right. On May 8th, I attended the dispatch workshop on. May 9th, the Upper Arkansas Board of Conservancy meeting. Um, on the 14th, uh, the three of us went to speak with the water attorney at Colorado Springs. Uh, <coughs> on the 16th, I attended the fundraiser at Beckwith Ranch. On the 20th, uh, the Justice Center workshop. Um, and yesterday was a very long day. The three meetings we had the CO, uh, the CDOT meeting, the CDS meeting, and the emergency training uh, meeting last night. And a myriad of other phone calls and things I just did. Good. Thank you. Uh, I did not make it, obviously, to the fundraiser, the house concert for raising funds for Beckwith Ranch. You did. $1,785. But they're still waiting for your check, they told me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Double <Mansion> check. check. <laughs> uh, how was the music? I'm sorry? How was the music? It was, as always, when Smythe and Taylor play, just spectacular. Good. It was wonderful. Good. Good, good, good. Excellent. Good. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Mr. Kendall? Yeah, I had uh, 
some of the same meetings, of course. Uh, I thought the water law uh, consultant meeting was very good, informative. And I owe you boys for lunch. Still. You owe him. Why do I owe you? It was two hundred dollars. I was afraid you'd say plus it. <laughs> and I did the tip. It was fifty. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> doesn't pay not to be there. <laughs> anyway, that old drove out of the parking lot. <clears throat> same yeah, I know, but <laughs> but anyway, uh, I thought that was very good. Um, we can talk about that later. Um, also, the uh, uh, working with the uh, lot six boys on. Uh, I'm setting up a meeting. We'll be talking this week on the next phase. Then I sent you all the, the updated uh, costs. And I uh, did mention, Tom, you, you did ask about the, the airplane. got such a wide wingspan. It takes a little more concrete or a little more uh, pavement. So they're working up those costs. Uh, and by the way, that runway maintenance, uh, it, we're going to go for a, a CDOT grant for that, for part of the CIP for the airport. And they'll be putting that thing together later. Um, also, just a uh, note, you notice uh, we, we parked these cars in front of the building today uh, and we blocked the handicap ramps. And, and I've been asked, and I've, I've got it in the works, uh, I'm going to get uh, the road and bridge boys uh, to paint a handicap on, on uh, both sides of that ramp on that side of the Great road. idea. Uh, just if the weather hasn't been conducive or we would have not blocked it today. Um, Justice Center uh, contract. We talked about that. We had that uh, workshop. And I, I do have the rewrite of that. So here you go. And, and the contract, uh, I'm going to read the, this to you, but here's a copy uh, of what they sent me. What they did. Did they approve the uh, changes? Of that? Yes, and, uh, and I've got a rewrite here. And I'm going to read this just for the record. That's an extra one. I did, uh, I guess that one. Yeah, you can have that. And then, Please go together. Well, let me see here. This may may not be. Here. Let's just take a look at that first. Um, here. So what what they did? I got a hold of Bob Johnson right away, and and they did uh, on the Article One. They they deleted paragraphs two and three, like we asked them to do. You want a copy of that? Yeah. And uh, so that was on the. Uh, Article one, page paragraphs two and three, and then they re in rereading that first paragraph, we had discussed maybe rewriting that some, but they decided it did not need revision, so they let it ride. It looked good. Article uh, two, uh, they deleted that last sentence uh, that we discussed in it as well, and then in attachment A, they removed all references to Gilpin County, um, and uh, and then we. Uh, uh, Point out that I'm the point of contact for them, so I revised that. So I have the the uh, corrections here. This is the the uh, rough draft corrected as they stated here. I didn't make copies for everybody. Uh, that's just a summary of what they did. I can pass this over to you and take a look at it. So uh, with that, I think we're in pretty good shape. I think, and we'll we, depend on what we decide here. I sure. decide to sign that. Uh, as, as we all had discussed, I'll do it without having to vote on that. Mr. Chairman, it's not on the uh, agenda, but would you allow it to be added to the agenda for the uh, with the changes? Yeah, I think so. We did discuss it um, during that committee meeting. Thank you for asking, by the way. I appreciate that. Uh, and I get up to put the final you know, once we approve the changes here, then I'll have them send the final draft. Then we can approve it. Right. And they, what, what they yeah. don't want to do is do that, and then we have another change because that costs them money to go into print. You know, they're going to come up. Not a lot, but they just pointed out. Come on. If we, that's why it's all draft right now. And, yeah, and they will make this. No, I, I get that they don't want to probably print X number of documents. Right. And then but, they do it again. But the problem, and, and I was, I just get a little nervous approving changes to a document without <coughs> seeing the changes in the document. So here they but, are. Uh, you know, you guys can, so we can take a look at I, the I'm okay mm -hmm. with approving these changes, but if they don't, they don't want to entertain the idea of having to change the So again, this is the uh, rough draft with the changes in it. And then I think we've got to probably clean up the signature page on the last document. 
they didn't know what to do now. Well, a seventy-two thousand dollar deal. They send us a document that has Gilpin County in it. They don't have any room to yeah. quarrel about no more changes. I concur with that comment for sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, they were very responsive. So they the, did a good job of covering it. In rereading the first paragraph of Article One. It does not mean residue. I think, uh, I think uh, uh, Jay, you gave Jay a copy of our what it does. Yeah, this is the draft that they're going to have, and this is the changes that are flagged. And they did that, and you can see. And there's no. Okay, so there's article, article one. one. And that was. As it was, the other two paragraphs were deleted. So this is the, the draft, and all they'll do is make this final and put in the right dates. Well, and I certainly think we reserve the right to change it again. Sure, we can change it any time we want. They think sure. we should or shouldn't if that no. was their business. So, they, but all uh, my point was they were very responsive. They kept it as a draft. Right. They didn't make the changes. I was submitted to us for us to, to go and take yeah. it out. Well, I think Chair would entertain the motion to approve the changes. We get the final draft, right? Not the final sure. document. Yeah. It's going to be a draft. draft. We'll just have them send it as, as we accept it. Well, now go ahead and I'll and we accept the changes that were made. Forward. Uh, and uh, ending the review of the final document, we get it. Mm -hmm. If the changes are consistent with what we're approving today, um, then we're authorized to go ahead and sign no, off. You authorize me to sign. That'd be fine. Okay. Uh, and I can get that to you probably today. They're that. Re they're going to be that responsive. Okay. I'll e email it to the second before. Yes. Okay, I'll second the motion. We move to second it to approve the proposed change that we discussed at the committee meeting and authorize Commissioner Canda to sign the final document after we've had a chance to review that. If it's consistent with the changes. Right, if it's consistent after the review. with the changes. Right. Okay. Further discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay? Carries. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah, that was good time, wasn't it? Yeah, they, yeah. we are one step closer. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then uh, the other thing is uh, that CDOT meeting uh, for planning was, was good, I thought. It, it was pretty excruciatingly long, uh, but yeah, it was good to see what their f future is. That meeting included, just for everybody's information, a look at the four-year window and then six years after that from a CDOT fixing the roads point of view and doing things for the that affect our county. So uh, they took our comments. They're going to come back, I think, with uh, what their plan is going to be. Uh, the C, the emergency services meeting, also I thought was uh, informative, a uh, good meeting too. And uh, that training last night, the best part of that was the food. <laughs> it was a long meeting. Well, <laughs> and I don't know if you well, think the food was any good. concur with that. <laughs> quite agree with the food <laughs> part. You, you got it. I glazed over at that meeting. It was way too long and yeah. way too detailed. Yeah. What I felt we could have had was an executive so overview of how to get the yeah. information as was needed as opposed to bombard us with two well, and They kept hours. diving into the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And it was just two hours of minutia and while I appreciate that, though it's available, it was just, it was, in my opinion, it could have been done right. more expeditiously. Right. And that was uh, the other But I, appre I appreciate it. I'm doing it. All right. That's all I got for now. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's see. Back to when was that? May 7th. Um, we had a BOCC meeting on this. So that afternoon, after our BOCC meeting, I went over and started the demo and reconstruction of the public health nurses office uh, on the southern two suites of uh, Pat Bailey's commercial building there, which is obviously where we're going to locate public health. So I worked on that. When are going to have it ready? Carpet. Well, certainly got to be ready before the 31st, so I don't know exactly the day of the carpet uh, delivery now. We backed it off. It was 
the carpet was scheduled to be installed on the 31st, and we said we need a little sooner than that. So I should finish up the drywall work uh, hopefully this afternoon and uh, finish texture and that, and then we'll move on. So they're painting. Uh, Jackie's been helping. Jackie Hobby's been helping uh, Alyssa do some painting in there, and Chris. <laughs> Get the right psychedelic colors for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wait, <laughs> wait till you see. Uh, Chris, our maintenance person, has been over doing some sanding on the drywall for me when he has time. So, uh, and then uh, we attended the dispatch center workshop in the commissioner's room. I thought that was a good meeting. We had good turnout for that. Uh, I think everybody understood that if their entity was not represented, they probably weren't going to have a voice in that process. So I thought that was a good meeting. Um, obviously, I attended the Upper Arkansas Water Conservancy District meeting. <coughs> um, and then the Conservation District had a dinner meeting at Rancher's Roost. Seems like I've already talked about this. Yeah, it was before. Yeah. I don't know. Um, are in it again. Yeah. Uh, and then we had that, the next day we had that Conservation District Water Walk class, which I thought was very well done. Instructor was, uh, I, I wish I'd had a lot of, a lot more college professors similar to him, because he did a good job. He was no nonsense. Yeah, we're taking that uh, He was a retired court water referee from district or uh, division five I believe over in the southwestern part of the state but did a really good job they had about 25 people in that class and so that was nice that yeah, all heard of it was sold out yeah you know. and then of <coughs> course uh, I as the other two commissioners indicated it attended the conference with uh, Show it in Monson over in Colorado Springs and uh, discuss some water issues there. <clears throat> and then I attended the Republican Central Committee meeting later that day uh, on the 15th. Did you mention this? I don't think you did. On the 15th, we had a work day for public health. Uh, Commissioner Kanda was out of town, but uh, Commissioner Prince and I and, and uh, one of Commissioner Prince's employees hung some sheetrock and did some patching on those offices yeah. so that was good we we made a pretty good dent in things yeah. uh, February 16th I attended the airport board meeting um, and then also uh, because I did not go to the Friends of the Beckwith Ranch uh, I had a conflict down here we had the community dinner yes. Ruth Roper Cook did a great job uh, so we always enjoy that. My wife and I enjoyed that very much. I got yelled at because I wouldn't sit still, but didn't think it was fair for you to serve that whole group. So, uh, and I'm sorry I didn't get to be there too. But I'll get so the next one. Had a had a nice evening uh, visit with some folks down here. So um, the cleanup day, I was out of town, so I did not participate in that uh, for Silver Cliff. I don't know where you guys you were back. I stopped back. over. Did you? Uh, Sunday on the 19th, I uh, attended a meeting of the Friends of the Beckwith Ranch out at Beckwith uh, and had to leave at noon because I had another conflict there. but. Uh, and then set in on the Justice Center workshop on the 20th, CDOT meeting yesterday, a weed board meeting yesterday, ran a little long, that's why I did not make it to the CES meeting. Uh, and then that G402 meeting with Christy Coleman last night. Um, so kind of covers what I think we've been doing. I, I struggle with that CDOT meeting a little bit. I just wanted to say I, I really tried to go in there with a positive attitude, and it kind of irritated me from the very beginning that they just sent us an email and said we're meeting with you, you be on there, this be day there. This, this is a time. Day. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, without any communication of we'd like to meet with you or what is your schedule? Well, we were lucky like we weren't doing something. Else. Exactly, that's what I thought. So I get it. Sometimes you just have to pick a date and run with it, but not when you're coming from out of town to somebody else's venue. I thought we would have should have been selecting a date, but I, I tried to get past that and. <laughs> He's I'm not going to lie to you, man. We got on the bus dang thing. My attitude went south. I just, I think that is the biggest waste of money the CDOT is spending in this state. Everybody swallows it like a pill. Um, Makes good press. And bus dang, yeah, bus dang outrider to try to provide transportation, public transportation to these rural areas. We indicated to them that there weren't enough people up here to fill a Volkswagen, let alone some bus dang bus. That's why we're not here. Yeah. And uh, and then when I plotted her big presentation on bus dang versus her unwillingness to consider the state removing the snow, not plowing it onto the sidewalks, but removing it, I just thought, you know what, I'm about half over this. And that's why I said, I, I believe we think removing the snow on our highways through town is a hell of a lot more important than bus dang service. And Mike Carter said, yeah, like a thousand times better. I don't know if you heard yeah. him say it. She certainly did, but... I think her problem uh, was she, it was out of her... Yeah, she didn't know she what didn't was going on. She didn't have any clue, and she, we needed the maintenance guys in the meeting. The she couldn't answer the questions we were guys asking. I was disappointed for... Liz Cliff has, has complained about that on a consistent basis. And the thing that has made it so difficult is that it has not been done in West Cliff. I, I really can't speak for South Cliff, but because they don't really have the curves like West right. Cliff does. Um, <clears throat> moving the snow from the highway onto the the Basically curb and the parking gutter lane, yeah. mm -hmm. just increases the amount of work that West Cliff has done. Yeah. It's tripled their on their on their road. Right, but here was the here's the thing. It was never done before until West Cliff put up a safety sign at the school to tell you to slow down. And CDOT has given Westcliff a huge amount of grief over that mm -hmm. because it's on it's on not right an approved away. sign by CDOT and it's right. on there right away. And we just said come sue us if you want because it's gonna save our kids' lives. And it really does slow cars down in my opinion personally. Yeah, then. And they finally backed off. But I think it's I think this is as much retaliation as it is process um, because up until then every year they have removed it they moved it to a place we put <coughs> space to put the snow in the town so we can get it out of the way and since that occurred is when this started yeah. so really you know it's been it's just not a very cooperative effort and it really bothers me yeah. a lot yeah by the time the meeting was over I was irritated and ready to just walk and get up and walk out, which I did after the meeting was over. I didn't stand around and visit with her much, but I just didn't think she had enough information. Uh, as a regional director, I expect her to be a little more on top of some of the questions we asked, but... Or willing to go talk about it instead yeah. of trying to argue. So, anyway, uh, be that as may. Anything else, gentlemen, on commissioner reports? No, sir. Okay. Upper Arc Water District Report. Um, can't remember. I'm just having a moment. I did not have a good night, I can tell you. I got deathly ill it's last night. Poison. And I hope it wasn't. I don't think it was food poison. But, um, yeah, so... That upper arc board meeting, um, Jeff Olinger resigned uh, as of June 31, which means that he'll still be a seated board member on their, let me check the date, I think it's the 14th of June is their next meeting, no, 13th. So, Senderhoff indicated he would accept his resignation over the phone, look forward to getting his letter of resignation, but a little further research, and I didn't realize it because I just missed him making the statement of when his resignation was effective, but if in fact it is the 31st, he'll still be a seated 
board member on their meeting on the 13th, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I can tell you that Mr. Shields, Mike Shields, met with Judge Murphy yesterday in Salida. Uh, I talked with Mike about that and I asked him how it went. He said, good. He said it was like a job interview. Mike Shields has submitted his name to be considered by the three chief judges to replace Bob Senderhoff when his term expires May 31st of this year. So, um, when did they say they announced it? And I asked Mike that, and Mike said that Judge Murphy said <coughs> legally he has to make a decision by June 1st, <coughs> but that he actually anticipated making a decision by uh, the end of this week. So we'll see. Don't know. Uh, and then somebody asked me, how are we going to be notified about that? And I couldn't answer it. I don't have any idea. Uh, I suppose I can contact Judge Murphy and ask him how that's going to be uh, promoted. So uh, other than that, I don't have anything. Um, Mr. Candy, anything? Have you talked with anybody about We're, uh, Upper Arc? We're still trying to get that. We're going to go over there on the 29th, like they set up for the blue line meeting with uh, them. Who's going? That, uh, uh, not all of them complete yet, but uh, Vic Barnes, Rob Canterbury, Fred Berry, Robert Miller, Keith Hood. Uh, Donnie Camper wants to go, St. Pico. And I'm, Mike Shields says either he or uh, Sarah would go. I've got to talk to him and see who's going to do it. Which Washington's. Uh, a uh, well owner representing so pretty good rounded out right. group to ask questions and all it'll be is a cursory me meeting to get the ball rolling to say here's what, what our issues are and how come we haven't had a chance to talk about them until now and we're going to work uh, getting answers back uh, here to county and uh, also set up, uh, trying to set up, I haven't done it yet, that meeting with the USGS uh, guy on the alluvial storage uh, presentation he gave us over there. And we can set that up, uh, you know, we'll have to figure a date and time. I asked him to send me some some uh, meeting windows that we, we just use. I don't know, who, who was asking you about it, Tom? Somebody, would, uh, when we, we heard it, we thought that would be a good thing to set up. Good. USGS? Yeah, getting that briefing now. Yeah. Somebody was actually at that meeting yeah. and said that they thought it would be a good idea to bring it to the community. You have a question, sir? I would like to make a comment on uh, Bill, I really respect you, but I'm really disappointed that you're going to this meeting. I'm going as a, not as a commissioner now. You are a commissioner. Yeah, it doesn't matter, though. Hey, I'm let me also finish, water. Let me finish. Okay. I really respect you, and I appreciate your efforts in this area because in my heart I feel we need an augmentation plan. We have several of them now in the county, and an augmentation plan to help the farmers and the ranchers is so important. But we publicly stated that we would not support a meeting with them uh, while we're a member of, uh, while we're part of their um, filing with the Division II Water Court. Uh, we signed a paper to that effect and we sent it to them. And I really feel you can't divorce yourself from being a commissioner by saying I'm here as a private citizen. Either you're a commissioner or you're not a commissioner. So with due respect, I really wish you would reconsider and not, I mean, it's fine for the folks who want to go is fine, but I really wish you'd reconsider and honor the commitment that we all made not to support a meeting with them until such time as we're no longer part of that filing. And, and I mean this with due respect, because I really do appreciate you. I'm not trying to create an issue here. I'm just, it bothers me. I debated whether to say anything, but my heart told me I needed to speak up. And I, I respect that. No, I, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, the issue I have is the fact I don't want to fight this in court myself, period, and spend the money. Uh, I care about it. I care about keeping the water in the valley or in the county. So 
you know, uh, it, I've, it's hard to sit there and say, I'm not going to talk to you until you, you talk to me. And they got, they filed, they have made no indication they're going to withdraw anything from what I've seen so far. And this is an opportunity, I think, to, to get in there and duke it out with them without spending money. That's where I've been the whole time. So I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll think. Okay. Thank you. I just had to say what I wanted to yeah. say. Thank you. Yeah, and I guess I, I kind of agree with Commissioner Prince. I would ask you at least to give it some further thought about attending that meeting again. I, I don't have a problem if people want to go from the community, but uh, uh, there was a reason that we voted to send them that letter, and it was... And we did. Try, try to uh, put some pressure on them. Uh, and I think with you going, it subverts that effort. Well, I don't know. So, it, to uh, me, it's, if we sit here and not say anything, I think that subverts it, too, because, you know, if we're trying to fight it, why wouldn't we as a group? But I, I understand that we made a statement, and we, we were strong. We were firm. We signed it. Uh, we made a statement. It's been published in the paper. Uh, so now I, it looks to me that the water make something happen um, and and I, I agree with you I, I do think we need an augmentation plan of some kind but it has to have storage in it it has to be the right one and it needs to be discussed with the citizens of the county they didn't do that here's an opportunity at least they're opening up to say well, you know come in and talk to the blue line guys you know? yeah I don't think Senator Hoff asked you as a water user to Put together a group to meet with these. Well, he didn't blue ask line, me to do it. I think. I, I no, he him. specifically asked you in that meeting, well, in the meeting he did, to yeah. put together a group of people. He asked you that as a commissioner, not as a water right user, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, that's probably true. I think we we voted not to do this, and I think one third of the commissioners are doing it. So uh, I just hope yeah. you understand. I think where I'm coming from, and I hope you understand where Jay's come from, and probably enough said there, but uh, I would ask you to consider that. We did have a question, yes, ma'am. Is there going to be a report of some uh, some sort of report on your meeting with the attorney? What, what uh, he told you, what you learned, things like that? Yeah, good point. Um, we should have talked about that a little more probably during our commissioner report. Uh, I could certainly give you my perspective of that. I think it was a little bit of a uh, non-glamorous meeting. We didn't really, I don't think I learned anything that I didn't already know. Uh, I think we, what we felt and what we believed were some scenarios, I think we got uh, confirmation about that from obviously professional attorneys. Um, I think I came away with it that the basic idea was from their perspective that as county commissioners, which is why we went up there to find out what our options were, was that um, we would have to, this is a land use issue with a county because we're not water right owners. Uh, I think, didn't you gentlemen feel that was part of what the final outcome was that if you if you want to do anything you're probably gonna to have to do it in the land use area right not not fight it as a an opposer in water court with standing but go ahead sir. Yeah. if I may um, I went with specific questions that were written out I received from some from the public and the questions I really were looking for answers for is do we need to be part of the Upper Arkansas Water Conservancy District? Can we do something on our own? Can we have a Custer County Water Conservancy District? That was one option. Is it possible to move to the Lower Arkansas or a different Conservancy District? And, and the concern was the methodology in which this was handled, um, where after the filing we learned that it was, that it was done, without any input from the water right use of Custer County. And what I took away, so I, I did learn, I didn't go there knowing the answers to these questions, and I learned that it would be 
very, very difficult, if not impossible, certainly too expensive for Custer County to do its own thing. Um, so uh, the best way to manage water use is in, as Chairman Flower said, is in zoning, uh, planning, and that type of thing. The big concern, of course, is if an augmentation plan comes in, uh, one of our concerns, and there's many, many concerns, but the one that we're, let me rephrase that, the one that I'm most concerned about is destroying what we have. Why would most of us live in this area? We're rural, we want to stay rural. We don't want huge developments coming in. We don't want a 50 track housing development come in and start dotting the landscape of why we live here. So we were concerned that with a water augmentation plan that when a subdivision wants to come in, the first question they're going to do is they're going to stop at Jackie Hobby's office and say, I would like to put in a subdivision. The first thing she's going to, well, first two things we say is, what do you do about sanitation and what do you do about water? So um, the concern was with an augmentation plan, that answer could be very quickly, I will buy it from the augmentation plan. So this is the kind of concern that I've had that I don't want to ruin what we, why we're here, all of us. I suspect why we're all here. Um, and what I learned is we can control that, not worry about the augmentation plan, but we have to be diligent and allowing, we have to manage our growth very carefully. So that's what I learned from it. And um, I feel much better about the entire process that's going on now, I feel we probably are going to lose in water court. Um, and, and the attorneys told us that, you know, unless you have some really significant reason, uh, it probably will not, you will not be able to defeat it. Because the state wants augmentation. They want augmentation plans. And it's the way to manage the water for the state. But we're concerned about managing it for the county. So without going on a long diatribe about this, um, it's going to fall back on us to do land management and growth management to allow control growth uh, based upon what the constituency has to do. Which, which is a want. good point because then we've got a strategic plan that really spells that out and what the Correct. county and what our constituents want. And that's a the viewscape, the agricultural business, the ability to control the areas where the industrial stuff happens, uh, make some jobs available at some <laughs> amount, and, uh, and uh, that's how we'll, we can operate with the right uh, zoning regulations that we have, or change if we need to. Right. And we don't have to approve a PUD or a supplementary type, um, use per permit, or anything, depending on what, what it is. And if it doesn't fit what our county wants, then I'm not going to approve it. Well, that's right. That, that, so that that's my report on what I heard. So, so it really didn't change your minds about anything? No, not really. Uh -uh. Okay. No. I, I just think uh, they made it pretty clear without being a water right owner, we're not going to have any standing in court. And you said, I can't imagine without standing in court why you would want to go spend up to $100,000 on the engineering. Uh, we're not even going to take into consideration what you have to say because you're not a water right holder. And we kind of knew that, I think. I think we, we believed that. that all along. So um, we're going to get to public comment here, and I, I, we need to back up because I want to talk about this Justice Center just a little because we blew through that contract. We knew what we were talking yeah, about. They, they I don't think we were being very polite or fair to the audience, so we'll come back to that during public comment. I mention that now just so you don't let me forget. That's a good point. Uh, we got to keep that in yeah. front so that's all I had on Upper Arc. Are we okay to move forward there? Did you have a response to Jackie's question? Did you learn something different about the attorneys, how we came out of that meeting? Well, I felt the uh, same as what Jay said. I, I, we did find, you know, it's, it's a land use issue to manage our growth. Uh, the water augmentation, uh, you know, is uh, needed at, at some level and for some of that as well. Um, I don't think we... Uh, were surprised by anything he said um, at all. Uh, I thought it reinforced some of 
the, where we were in the beginning anyway. Right. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the way I looked at it. Sure. And, uh, and, and, and the fact that they blindsided us with not letting the public comment on that is water under the bridge. We discussed that. We need to move forward. Um, and uh, like I said, that's hard for me to sit there and not do anything. Uh, well, that goes on, like you said. We're going to lose in that. They're going to press down a path unless we can convince them why should they spend money fighting it either if we can get them to modify it or withdraw it. So that's why I'm uh, stuck on what I, you know, I don't like. It's a guy that has the water and, and believes in the process that we've come up with for growth in the county. Uh, I don't want to leave the county either. Okay, we'll move on. Attorney items. I also attended the uh, meeting with the water law attorney in Colorado Springs on May 14. I do want to disagree with Tom's characterization that it was a non-glamorous meeting. My sole purpose for being there was to provide eye candy. That's true. He was doing his best to be a, a fly on the wall. On May 20, well, I was I attended the Justice Center Committee to discuss the contract. Yesterday, I also attended the Weed Board meeting as a member of the Weed Board. I uh, worked with Jackie on some of the issues she deals with. I think you're going to report on the one at Lake Dewey, so I won't get into that then. And then finally, Mr. Howard is uh, getting active again. Um, he's... and. He sent an email to our undersheriff about applying for a position that was posted, and for some reason, I don't know why, our undersheriff actually responded to him, which kind of encouraged him. Um, and I sent Mark Howard an email last night, that, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just I'll read you the first paragraph. Mr. Howard, so here we go again. Dealing with you is like being in the movie Groundhog Day. You keep filing the same frivolous complaints with the Colorado Civil Rights Division, claiming the Custer County Sheriff has discriminated against you, even though you have never filed an employment application with the Sheriff, not once. The Civil Rights Division goes through the motions and pretends to take each of your complaints seriously. The county is compelled to waste time responding, and eventually a decision is made saying there is no evidence to support your claim. Um, and then basically, so he waits, I said, you wait for another job opening to be announced. You falsely claim that you applied even though you have never applied. You aren't interviewed or hired because you never applied. So you file another civil rights complaint and the whole process starts over again. And I reminded him that he's been notified numerous times by me several times personally because of his felony conviction. He seems to forget about that. Um, so I told him that if he actually is going to file anything more, because there's one that's pending right now that's about to be dismissed again, just like all the others have been, and that he should file another one, then I'm going to you know, take him to court, seek an injunction against him to put an end to this. So dealing with Mark Howard again. Okay. Did uh, Chris Barte, he called in them and asked them if he had to file a, a new employment. Yeah, he, he had sent an email. And, he, and he, Chris said, you never filed it in the first place. You never right. sent one to us. <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't bother with that part. He just waits for their, a job to appear, doesn't apply, and claims he did, and yeah. claims he was discriminated against. That's all. Okay. Well, was that via email or was that written? That's uh, email and my response is email. Okay. Thank you, sir. Admin assistant. Quiet as a mouse over there. Uh, public comment. Anybody have anything they want to visit with the commissioners about that's not on the agenda for this morning? Yes, sir. Yeah, Ron Lavar resides at 1700 County Road 389, just north of the bridge. Okay. Currently, there's a tree growing out from underneath that bridge and has been for many years. Okay. And I have pictures. Okay, let me let me just ask you something real quick. Is sure. this on the agenda? Yeah, it'll okay. be underneath me. And we will well, honor your okay. comments and stuff Excellent. then. I stopped and looked at that this morning on the way down here. Did you? So, Excellent. Yeah. Did too. Okay. So I don't mean to squelch right. you, but 
we'll deal with it when we get to that. Don't take my thunder. <laughs> Jackie wants to be the star. We got a spotlight that's going to come down out of the ceiling, and so we want it on her, not on. Uh, so yeah, we will. My bleach, my hair. Yeah, we will deal with that. At least you got some. When we get to down the end. Other public comments? Anything else, you guys? No, no? she's oh. actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can bring it up if you want. I will. Uh, no, you, well, it's I not just, on the agenda. Oh, it's not on the agenda. No. Under my report. Oh, well, um, I, as I shared with you before the meeting, uh, there was a question asked on Facebook about whether the VRBOs were paying their fair share, if you will. And, and I did assure them that they are paying, if they go through VRBO, they are paying their pillow tax. Well, then somebody says, well, what about... Um, are they paying commercial? And do, do they have the right wells? And do they go through the special use permit? And then Ole Babcock brought up, pulled up one that is, um, it's about, what, $2,700 a night. It will do up to 50 people. Um, my guess is that their septic is not sized for 50 people, but I don't know that. And um, and so I just did a little research on the guy that owned this. I mean, this was this is an extreme case, obviously. And um, and right there on the VRBO site, he says that he developed this um, for the purpose of having. I mean, it was obvious that he developed it as a commercial, commercial enterprise, but he's not paying commercial taxes on it. And and this is this is not a fair. Um, playing field for the businesses in town that have to do that. Uh, so um, so I gave that information to Jackie. I, I talked to her a little bit. She said that she has a little bit of an update on that. But um, I mean, I'm not a big let's tax a more person. But then again, it isn't a, a, a fair playing field. And and you guys struggle to make ends meet. Yeah. So I, I'm just wondering whether there should be some, you guys maybe should uh, uh, look at that and make sure, you know, septics and, and whether they, sh they have to go through the permitting process. Right. So Good point. that's Good point. what I know. The point is if Greener will take and Westcliff has just started grappling with this exact question and in fact there will be a a proposed ordinance in Westcliff dealing with exactly this. And of course the question comes, well if it's right for if it works for Westcliff, does it make sense for Silver and the council also? So my personal feeling is that you're exactly on target and maybe we ought to ask Jackie to help us figure out how we can make this a level fair playing field. Okay, VR are really concerned about uh, like you said septic water, sure. those kind of things that... BBR, BRBOs are allowed by the state. If you remember last year, El Paso County was going through the same headaches. Uh, this particular one that we're talking about has been contacted twice. It's in that file that's sitting on that desk and was represented by a lawyer at the time where he basically laid it all out in a letter and then our lawyer at the time uh, said, you can't do nothing. And that was because I was concerned with the amount of people. If I read the, and I have a uh, look at so many of them, I think it's a six-bedroom septic, and he's advertising for 20. But let's take the BRBO of Maurice Woods out at the lake. That septic system cost him over 30 grand to put in because he was busted for renting his property out to this many people. And he went ahead and put the septic in to accommodate it, so he's good to go. But the state says that if you do not have someone check it in, that you go through the site, VRBO site, they carry the insurance and everything, then you're not a motel, you're not a hotel. I'm amazed because every year the assessor's office goes to the state and tries to get these VRBOs shut down because they feel the same way. It's a commercial entity, but they're saying the difference is that you don't have someone checking you in at the desk. So the state allows it, I don't know. JD says basically our hands are tied. 
but with the septic we can get him that way. That's our tool that we can and use. I think, I think that's my biggest concern. And a, the playing field would be. But it's sanitary. not fair. But they don't pay any extra taxes. They, they no, just have to pay the cost no, of it increasing there. No, and sometimes they're paying ax. They have ax status. Yeah. So they're paying. I mean, this guy on this one pays about twenty-four hundred dollars a year in taxes. That's one night stay. At his. At his. You point very well. Yeah, I think we're getting scammed as a county. I, I understand what you're saying, Jackie Hobby. Uh, I'm not willing to buy it hook, line, and sinker. Uh, I know these counties along I-70 are just... I sat a meeting over a year ago, and we talked about this very thing, and one of those commissioners said, Tom, I guarantee you within two years you will be overwhelmed with this, and it's happening. We're not overwhelmed. But it, we weren't talking about this a year ago. And I think we will end up We have over 70 in these. Custer County right, right at this point. I'm not against them, but I think we need to deal with them. I think we're just sitting around like a bump on a pickle, having no idea what's going on. The other thing I want to throw out, I get that VRBO is a brand name. These are short-term rental internet companies. VRBO is not going to get any further advertisement from me by me saying that unless I'm specifically talking about a company. These are short-term rental internet companies. That happens to be one of them. There are others. Bed and breakfast. Right. Well, they're not really yeah. even bed and breakfast. They're short-term rentals. Well, that's, that's all there is to it. Because at bed and breakfast, someone stays yeah, in the but house and fixes the mail. There's no, yeah, they cook for themselves. It's totally different than a bed and breakfast. Clamping, mm -hmm. all that fall underneath thing. this yeah. category. But let, right. let's let's think about this. What, let's not waste our energy on it. Let's let Westcliff and then see where <laughs> they come from. Because they're going to have to do the research and stuff and see if there's anything we can do. Their outstanding attorney has done a huge amount of I know. So I believe... Proposed an ordinance. Look at... I don't know why Antlers, Westcliff Inn is yeah, not I flipping out. Because they have lost a lot right. of business. Well, and I disagree with you, respectively, because the two towns are going to have totally different... Well, not totally different. They're going to have certainly different concerns than the county. One of those primarily is... Septic. So I'm not going to sit back and wait for the towns to decide what they're going to do. If we're going to do something as a county, I think we need to do it as a county. You I'm not opposed to looking at whatever like comes out of there. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea about that. And a, night, a so. commercial enterprise is a commercial enterprise. Exactly. And that has, and we are not zoned for commercial enterprises unless they go through a special right. use permit. We are zoned right. residential. Right. And so... And I, so, so what happened to El Paso should, County, though? They went through the same thing. But, they? but they're zoned different. They're so, but yeah. we've got the advantage right. with our zoning. Right, exactly. So we should that's be why, able to Well, maybe if that's the case. That's why I think the county situation. is different than what the town's going to be. Go ahead. Can I, can I suggest the three of us ask the planning and zoning to take a look at this? I mean, they usually um, planning and zoning takes direction from the board as to what needs to be reviewed. You're talking about the planning commission? Yes. Yeah. When you say planning and zoning, I'm, I'm thinking sorry. you're talking about that office. Oh, oh, planning commission. Sorry. I always call them both the same because right. they, they have the same leadership. So, um, it was on their agenda. It's on their agenda last time when we did the, we got off on the water. Okay. Those two meetings, it's on their agenda. Then, yeah. can, by consensus, could we say that we agree with that and, and ask them to move forward on it? Yeah, yeah and I'd like and to, hear, to us. hear what the differences are between El Paso and us and what other options we might have to well, control it uh, or to we figure can, out how to hand, uh, responsibly handle it. We can control it with the septic. That's the number well, one thing right now. For sure. But, but also, that's not just tax money to the county. Uh -huh, Custer County is a zoning county. We don't give building permits. That's right. So we're a land use county like Delta. Right. So El Paso, the biggest complaint, they couldn't do nothing. El Paso was getting complaints from neighbors because they said they're sitting in here in this residential house and the guy next door is renting it and they don't know who, but let's just go 
get out of the weeds and we'll look at okay so what you're saying is what we could do is come up with a fee for a land use issue that has a commercial operation or a tax. we already do as you well that we're just one time i'm talking about yearly or something to keep them you know some kind of an ordinance I, I, maybe that's possible because we are a land use county well they have to apply for an sup and it has to be looked at yeah, and then they have to pay a pillow tax and most of the ones that go right. through the internet ones, right. that's done for that's them. Done right. Right. But I'm we still scratching. So maybe that's how we can handle it. We just need to come oh, up with options. Yeah. Ordinances are enforced uh, by a sheriff's office. And respectfully, I would suggest all three of us, and I'm talking to myself as well, we better get ourselves educated and we better not wait on for somebody else to do some education. I think right. we need to do some research and figure out we're going to go. We need, we need to I, I would just mind. bet if I had the 2021 calendar here, we could write in here short term rentals a big issue in Custer County. I'll bet you we'll be right on track. I think in two years we're going to be well, why not? overwhelmed. Yeah, why not? I mean, I could rent my place and not have to account to anybody. Why not? Because. Um, uh, you could come here and you could purchase a, a small, reasonable home, rent it out, and just go through the VRBO. They cover the insurance, the cleanup, and everything. And then by the time you want to move here, your house is paid for. Be a slumlord. You mean short term rental internet company? Or did you mean VRBO specifically? Have you ever tried a My Pillow? <laughs> uh, and to his credit, uh, I want to just say this. Publicly, Charlie Ellison is in the short term rental internet company business. He responded to some of this stuff that was on Facebook, forwarded me some of that. I can't remember if he sent it to all three of us. And, and the argument basically was, and I believed it, and I kind of still do, but I'm taking a little different look at it, that the short term rental homeowners are buying property specifically to rent short term, which takes that unit out of the potential rental market because they don't want to rent them long term they just want to rent them for three or four or five days at a time and so is that impacting our rental market for employee housing in the county and his basic tenant was no it's not most of these short-term rentals are four to six bedroom four or five hundred thousand dollar pieces of property and he said the average employee housing is 200,000 in two to three bedroom. He doesn't believe, of course, he does it for a living, but he doesn't believe there's, a, there's an opposition there of fighting for those residences. And I understand that, that makes I sense. get that. Uh, if you're renting a big place that holds 50 people, that's not probably gonna be a piece of property that a married couple with one child is gonna buy and try to make a living in Custer County. So I understood that. There are some other things in there, too. I'm just giving you the highlight that I didn't particularly agree with, but that one I, I thought made sense. So anyway, public comment. Sorry. No, I do want to go back More to this public. Justice Center real quick. Just And this is for you folks sitting in the audience. Uh, I'm guilty. We kind of live and breathe this stuff, and then we get in a meeting, and we just deal with it. and and not give much thought to whether everybody understands what we're even talking about. So obviously the county commissioners believe that there, that there is a strong need for a new justice center in our county. So we are moving forward with trying to make that happen. Obviously, I think eventually it will go to the voters of this county to decide whether they believe we need one or not, because we certainly cannot financially do it without voter support. The thing we were talking about this morning on this contract, we are entering into, we voted to enter into a contract with Riley Johnson, an engineering architectural firm out of Colorado Springs, uh, to do the preliminary architectural and design work for a justice center that we have given them the parameters to say, this is what we believe we need within the next 30 or 40 years for our county. Uh, we want you to balance that with your professional expertise and then uh, give us some designs and architecture that we can look at to move forward. And so we did get a grant uh, to cover the cost of all this architectural work. 
So, so far the county has not spent uh, any significant dollars on this project. And, and we uh, bought land. Uh, and we did enter into a lease purchase agreement. We haven't really bought the land, but we did enter into a lease purchase agreement for six and a half acres, roughly, that sits east of the current courthouse and east of the sheriff's office. There's a big chunk of vacant land. We, we lease purchased that ground specifically for a new justice center. So our conversations in, in motion this morning was to, we looked at it, we had a meeting uh, this Monday, I guess it was, huh? Mm -hmm. And looked at their contract to us, and we said, well, we don't like some of the verbiage in there, so we asked them to change that. That's what we voted on this morning. Now they will respond. We appointed Commissioner Kanda as a point of contact with that company, so they will get back with him and, and do another contract, <coughs> a revised contract, and then we will vote on that. Well, we've actually already voted to let him sign it. If, in his opinion, well, we'll all three look at it. Sure. If, uh, if that contract reflects the, the changes that we voted on today, then Commissioner Kanda will be authorized to sign that. So I just wanted to give you that update. I probably came out of left field for some of you. Uh, there's also a hidden reason that I bring that up. Obviously, we believe that uh, to be successful with this, we have to have the members of our county behind us on this uh, initiative of trying to build a new justice center. So politically, the more we talk about it, the more we get the word out there. Uh, we need to hear positive and negative feedback. Don't ever feel like if you've got a problem with that, you shouldn't talk to us about it. We want to hear the, the issues. Uh, because we can't address them if we don't know what they are. So you're always welcome to approach one of the commissioners and say, hey, I got a little problem with your idea here. Okay, let's talk about that. That's exactly what we need to do. And I think our job and the committee, we have 20 people that sit on a citizens committee. Our job is to, to promote this to the, the voters of this county. So, yes, ma'am. You hired an architect. Yes. And he's going to do a drawing. Uh, concept. Yes, a concept drawing. Don't you think it would be get extra copies of those, put one in the library, okay. one in the We're, hallway? It's going to be in that's, that's, yeah. cool. Because I think that will help too. Yeah. Once we all agree, that company and the commissioners and the committee and whoever else says, yeah, we're narrowing this down. We're not going to put out 10 or 12 different concepts. But once we get it narrowed down and say, oh, we kind of like this direction, you know, absolutely, we'll be all over that. It'll be a big PR campaign. And, and just for those of you who don't know, um, what really precipitated this is our jail, our sheriff's office, and our court system is not in very good shape. We've been asked by the 11th district to add another courtroom. Uh, they help pay for that. It's, they do that with us, but specifically where our jail is and where the sheriff is, is um, not in very good shape. The amount of money it would take to rehab that and make it usable, it's just not worth it. It's like an old refrigerator where all the parts are worn out. You just don't fix it anymore. You buy a new one. Like fixing so our cars. It's not just that we think we would like to build a nice, pretty center. It's, it's an actually a necessity, in my opinion. Would that, would that be included in the Justice Center? Yes. The jail? Yeah, the Makes reason sense. we're calling it a Justice Center, it's more than a jail. Yeah. It's yeah. more than a courthouse or a uh, court facility. There are two entities that have funded this operation at this point, and that's uh, Department of Local Affairs, DOLA, and the underfunded courts administration office, they, they recognize that rural counties typically just don't have the tax base to take a swing at this just to find out if it's even feasible or not. So uh, both of those entities have uh, granted us money to the tune of $75,000 just for this uh, architectural and, and conceptual phase. Yes, ma'am. Speaking of justice, do we have any word on the DA? No. I have not heard a peep uh, officially. I've got some opinions about things. I suspect the governor's going to appoint Tom LaDue temporarily. Um, but no, I haven't heard a word. Uh, Molly Chilson, the district attorney, uh, that represents three counties? Four. Four. Thank you, sir. 
Park uh, County Chief. That's right. Right. I keep forgetting Park. Uh, that we pay to the tune of $9,000 a month for the DA's services. She resigned uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. And effective immediately, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it was one week after she gave the notice. Yeah. yeah. And so, and then requested the governor to appoint somebody as soon as possible. So I haven't heard anything else. Good question. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Ledoux was a DA down there. He's the assistant DA, right? The ADA he was. Right now. He was term limited, so right. he he went out and then he became an ADA. Yeah, assistant. District. And I suspect the governor will probably appoint him. And he'd be eligible to run again for the position at the next right. election. Right. Which would be 2020, correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've had some issues with that DA down there. And I don't think any anybody that's dealt with her cried over spilled milk when we found out she resigned. She just, for whatever reason, man, she would not prosecute cases that we felt she should up here in this county. Just thought she was way too busy, which, granted, Fremont County pays over a million dollars a year down there. Uh, to the DA's deal it's by population and so that, I think that's where a lot of her energy went. I may be speaking out of school here because I really don't know but man I just Makes got you wonder bad why feelings in the meetings we set in whether it's like woo, yeah. there wasn't even talking to her was there she very that was the cause dug her period. heels in and can't help you I'm busy down here and I know Sheriff Byerly has some serious things with her, so I'm sure he uh, feels the same way. Other public comment? If not, we'll move on. I got one. You better try that cake in the back, guys. <laughs> That's yeah. the best. Yeah. Banana, yeah. not bread. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, but I'm not going to do it until I know if I, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you. I don't know if I want to see you eat anything right now. <laughs> no, I've already been that route. I'm, I'm hanging on today, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to attempt it. Um, staff report. I've been trying to avoid this. There's no avoiding it. It's on the agenda. We're going to have to deal with it. Please bear with us. I'm sitting by my. Oh, see, <laughs> see how that works. Nice, sweet. Yeah, your friends. <laughs> Good morning. You guys need paper copies? Depends on what we're doing. If it's of the agenda, I've already got one. If it's what you mailed. Uh -huh. I got it. Okay. And they did make paper copies. Did you say she had 10 minutes? 10 minutes, that's right. Who's the timer in this out? Did you say 10 minutes? <laughs> did she say limit her to I 10 minutes? I would never say that. Somebody said it, but I'm not going to say who said it. Which one you got up first? Okay, okay so um, all applications for the zoning clerk job will need to be in the zoning office by 4 o'clock on this coming Friday, May 24th. Okay. Um, I would like to use the commissioner's room if possible. On the 20... On the 28th. Eight. Okay. I would like to start interviewing then, if all possible. We have six back and 12 out. That's Tuesday. So you had 18 all together? Uh, well, I or guess. You had 12 together, all together. You no, we had 18 back. all together, wow. but only got six okay. back. Got six candidates. I don't see anything scheduled in the commissioner's room. Um, I can double check once we get back. Miss Meredith will not be there, so she's going to be out that day. Can I sit her desk? No. no. Okay. He needs my chair if you want. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Don't touch anything on her desk. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, probably three or four people uh, will be interviewed for the job, depending on just what I have right. back if now. But if I get a bunch more, there'll be more. And when do you, they do? Pardon? When are Right. The last Friday. Day, Friday. Uh huh. At four o'clock. Oh, there it is. And so, what I would like to do is probably start scheduling for Tuesday, is May twenty eighth, at a half an hour intervals. 
Starting at eight, you said? Yes. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. So, um, at least three before lunch. Since before I'm lunch. using your room, you guys are all invited to watch me in action. Thank you. <laughs> That's a highlight of my day. I, I guarantee you I'll be videoing it. Are they allowed to speak? Um, oh, I don't I will. So. I will see if I will allow them. <laughs> all right, we got you on the schedule, kiddo, eight o'clock. Uh, we'll just block out all day. <laughs> and that way we're safe if you get four more applications. That would be in. super. Uh -huh. But um, if you want to come in uh, and sit, that will be great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. The These won't be open to the public, by the way. No, the interviews are not open to the public, but you people aren't public. <laughs> not right. It has to be being held in our office. I asked first before I got to the other parts. Okay, so as you know, Mr. Ron and his wife there, uh, well, I was driving down the road the other day and we stopped and spoke and there's a tree, there's a bridge above their home on County Road 389. And uh, we spoke about, uh, here's a map of 389. Uh, about a tree that when uh, water comes down, it actually collects debris, and he has some pictures that he'd like Come to forward, show you. Sir. You're welcome. Let's see those pictures. Yeah. Okay. Um, good morning. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you for being here. Gentlemen, appreciate, appreciate your efforts. Yep. No problem, ladies. All right. The overall bridge on 389. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three in question. The tree in question, after I cleaned out the debris around it. The tree's been there a long time. Uh, since the bridge was constructed about 25 years ago. <coughs> this is the opposite side of the bridge. Mm -hmm. Now, at, those were, these were taken July 2018. Okay. After the minor flood we had through there, where it came minor over the bridge. Which was a drought. Minor flood. Now, the other thing occurred that you don't see is part of the bulkhead has been washed mm -hmm. away at the bottom. Yep. You don't see that now. Right. Silk it back in since you bet. then. Okay. Now that tree doesn't allow for the debris to be self-scouring through there. Okay. It creates turbulence underneath that bridge. Mm -hmm. Who owns that tree? You. The county. Okay. I looked at it this morning. I didn't, <coughs> excuse me, didn't climb down you in there. Keep enough, but thank you. I certainly <coughs> leaned over and dropped my glasses in the creek and yeah, yeah. my phone. Did you go down again? <laughs> so I would say that I I understand your concern. Um, I I'm glad I stopped and looked. I thought the tree was growing out from under the bridge. It is not. It's growing adjacent to the bridge. Not but it's an impediment, no question about that, during a flood event. Without a flood event, it's probably not an issue. Didn't look to me like it this morning, the water was flowing good. Um, what would, what's your request, sir? That the tree be removed. Okay. <laughs> um, Currently it's also going up within a communication line. I saw that. I thought if I was in the communication business, I'd be squalling about that you tree bet. because it won't be long. It'll overwhelm that whole thing. I don't have a problem with that. I, Miss Jackie, you've looked at it, the tree? When it flew by. He wanted me to go back, but I've seen trees. I, <laughs> I told her I'd provide her with it. Who owns the land there? County does. It is uh, uh, it, it is not to, my, why I'm bringing it up is I felt that, you know, this is a $600 tree if he had to take it out, and it's not his responsibility. Right. But I would imagine that since you guys are the boss of Road and Bridge, that you could have them go take it out. Okay. I can tell you one thing. I won't vote to do anything until I know that we are legally within our rights to take that tree out. Because this county's gone down this road before. When I was a private tax-paying citizen, started cutting down trees and found out they didn't own the tree. 
So I that's sure right, am not going to get part of that. That's right. Yeah. Who actually yeah. owns the land? So when we find that that's deeded to the county, then I'll be ready to move forward. So where is it on the picture? Here? Well, you see the little red light. That's right. I think Jackie's telling this us. Is there. The well, I know, but I'm not going on Jackie's word for the county to get on the lamb of cutting down a tree. We have no right to cut down. one of these pictures. I mean, whose land is that? So where's the right of way? Really? Where's your house in relation to this? <laughs> this is that really nice house. This you? Here's the bridge. Here's the bridge. But I'll get the deeds. You won't see a deed. Well, well, it's fine. It's not being if we, well, you like, I don't think the county owns any ground. So this is all we, have, we have these. I think yeah. we own the easement. Right. So I don't know who owns trees. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, generally, the county just owns a right of way, not the actual. We don't, we don't own, own the land. land. Is it being assessed yeah. to somebody? So is this a, the right of way here? Is the blue lines, Jackie? Or the green? The, the, it's just the roads. No. This would be property. This is property. This, this is, is property his place boundary. right here. Yes. This is his property boundary. Yes. This has nothing to do with the road. This is the property right. boundary for 48. So I'm not. I'm. I'm actually in favor of doing that, but I will not do it until we know we're on solid legal ground. Because twice it's happened in this county. The county get all haired up, start cutting down trees and private land, and go. You pot liquors owe us 400 dollars a tree. Huh? And I'm not going that route. Did I say pot liquors in front of you? <laughs> That's twice. <laughs> Just exactly what I meant to, by the way. So I would ask Attorney Smith, let's make sure before we... I'll take a look and, and take a look at what the assessor has. If, if, if it's not being assessed to anybody, but we still have to go back and find out. There's right. got to be something somewhere that gives it to the county to come. Well, I'd like to know where the road. where their property lines really are. I don't, these are not them. If they go to the center of the creek. Well, you can't look at the property lines on that. That's I know. A, I'm just at wondering. But that's a taxpayer's map. I understand. Map. Okay. But is there a right-of-way? Overkill. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. If the bridge doesn't belong to the county, can I charge tolls on it? Yeah, I didn't say the bridge didn't belong to the county. I said, I'm not sure who oh. the trees belong to. I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure who owns the county. No, you cannot charge tolls on it. Yes, sir, go ahead. You can try. I want to wrap this up, because I think we're, we're, we're all be basically in favor, but there is a question out here. I'd like to move that we remove the tree on County Road, uh, 389 um, Greenwood Road uh, of concern, provided we get approval from the uh, county attorney telling us that we're on solid legal ground to do so. I'll second. We're moving to second it to approve the removal of the tree at the bridge. It's on the west, southwest corner of the bridge on 389. Discussion. Again, I. I just struggle with voting to do things based on something else happening prior to, but I understand we also can streamline the process a little bit doing that way. Um, I, another comment I have is I don't think just cutting the tree down is going to mitigate the problem. The root has to come out. Yeah, it has to be cut flush. So with the, that bank that structure, creek, basically. That and bed. so that's probably going to take a track hoe, which we'll we have don't have. I'm probably going to vote against this because I don't think I have enough information to support it. And that is primarily the cost of a track hoe being hauled in here uh, and <coughs> that root ball, because I think that's going to be a major but issue. This is not but a chainsaw cutting it off? No, it 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 no, because it won't solve the problem that Ron's concerned about, and that's that root ball interfering with the flow of the water and it hang up debris, whether <coughs> all the limbs are there or not, it's not going to matter. No. It's what's going on at the water line. That's my opinion. No, you have a, you have a large boulder right there that is growing from, and you could cut a flush of that boulder because that boulder is deflecting the water underneath the bridge. Right. It's part of the embankment of the bridge. Right. Uh, so that's the boulder my... part of the bowl, the part of the bridge, did you say? Is it <coughs> concrete up on it? So around that you boat. cannot yeah. see. You can even run the risk of digging that right. root ball out. Uh, what you want to do is just trim that, trim that base back to conform with the contour of that area coming under the risk. And you think leave the part of the root ball there? 
You could, yes. Trim it down so it doesn't become a snag. And right. Because uh, I've been cleaning it. Well, thank you. You know what? Maybe you could put a toll on that bridge. We covered some of your... <laughs> Uh, do you see what I'm saying, gentlemen? I'm just trying to be hateful here. I just think we need to talk to Road and Bridge. We need to have them look at it and maybe uh, get a tree person, uh, there's a name for them, arborist, to come look. I don't know. Well, I don't, I don't I'll comment. Uh, I don't have a problem having everything you said, Tom, looked at and then uh, with a go ahead once we understand what it is. I, I don't have a problem with it. I think we're all agreeing it ought to be removed. Right. So we can vote to do that and get the information to uh, make sure we hire the right guy or get the county to do it uh, or, or whatever. Well, I mean, we modify the the vote. And my, not, yeah, we're, my problem we're, is we're wasting too much time. If, well, to me, it's not a waste of time. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying come in here and but we can uh, we can structure the right motion now to cons meet the concerns that you're bringing up. We don't have to. Actually, I would prefer to just withdraw my motion. Let's get the information. Okay. I honestly, I thought it was going to be a chainsaw, right? Yeah, and pick right. the branches up. And put them right. Back. But since it's considerably, I think it's more. Than I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Then, then I, I misconstrued what was what the would take. Okay. To do right. this. So well, that's why you have discussion. But, and that's that, that's why I'm <laughs> suggesting right. now that I was hasty in making okay. the motion, okay. not getting the, all the information I needed. So I. Okay. I would like to withdraw my motion at this point, um, pending more information, and go ahead and we can make a decision at that time. And so we're not. I'm just going to see if you can put it on the agenda for our next meeting at the end of the sure. month. And I'll ask uh, Gary I'll to get down here and take a look yeah, at it. Yeah, I was going to say we need to have Gary Hyde take yeah, a look at it in the meantime, but I'll tell you, give you an answer for sure who owns that land. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Let's get back to that as well. So Those property uh, lines got to come together in the creek somewhere. Technically, you are well within your rights to withdraw your motion without having a second withdrawn, but typically, in the courtesy, uh, we would ask if the second is withdrawn. But if the second didn't want to be withdrawn, you'd still have the right to withdraw your motion. So I'm all for it. throwing it out. Uh, <laughs> so by consent, then, your motion is withdrawn. Thank you. Uh, but understand, sir, we will press forward, Madam. Admin time, assistant. Time is up the is it? Well, we want to get it out of there before the flood season. That's right. <laughs> Creeks are going to rise anyway because of the runoff. So you put that on the agenda for the 31st? Consideration of tree removal on County Road 389. Thank you. We're on good ground? Thank you. Perfect. All right, Miss Jackie. Okay, so along with Mr. Smith, the county attorney, I uh, did a cease and desist on six travel trailers out at Lake Louise. Um, I had sent the gentleman a letter, uh, certified and non-certified, with no answer. So uh, myself and two deputies went out and we taped up the doors and put the actual letter of cease and desist on the trailers. Case number? No, it's it's a file number, well, file. and I'm there's sorry. three of them. Well, which one are you talking about right now, specifically? Yeah, where are you? 101-47-281, Now, you said you put one on a mobile home. Is that No, two six. Six of them. Oh, okay. Six travel trailers. Right. And it's right at the fork of Lake Deweese. Okay, so that's... Sorry, go ahead, sir. I was just going to ask for the question. Yeah. And the issue is that they're living in the travel trailers long term without having the proper septic systems. They have like zero, that? correct. And correct? there's only one dwelling per parcel, yeah. and they have six. There's oh. also didn't meet the setbacks, plus he's got little fire rings that aren't even meet the setbacks. Uh, this property is owned by... Colorado Elk and Outdoor Recreation Outfitters. Okay. This property, yeah, you got to help us, man. We're lost. What property? What file number are you talking about? It's the ones that are listed, listed here. Season, just there's all. three, not six. There's six. Yeah, there's six trailers One, on three two, properties. Three. Seven, there's... I've got three file numbers here. 
three file numbers. Okay. There's two properties plus his property. No, there's three properties. Gosh darn, now I'm getting confused. There's three properties with six travel trailers. So each property has a individual okay. file. Not number. each travel trailer, but each property. Those okay. are property ideas. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And then the seven six. numbers below that are something totally different? Or? Correct. Those okay. are just for right. your information. Why? So we'll get there. Okay. But not pertaining to what you're talking about. Correct. Okay. Right. The cease and desist letter didn't copy very good but it looks excellent on the doors. <laughs> okay, and so you got a copy of the letter you sent. Right. Do we have a copy of the CD? Yeah, you yeah. have. Well, yeah, it. it's, it's really pretty faded. Oh, there's it's the one that's yeah. very faded. Got you. It didn't look like that in real. No, and so on every trailer is <coughs> prime tape on the doors, a letter, and a big yellow uh, cardstock that says cease and desist. How long do they have to get out once you post that? And what happens if they don't? We're going to court. 30 days, 60 days? No, he should have been in. He, I have seen nothing, heard nothing, seen nothing. I actually thought that he would be in my office when he received his, all the taping, but he didn't. So you cease and desist with those because of? Because of lack of septic system, uh, ignoring my letter. Setbacks. Setbacks. Setbacks? Mm -hmm. he, those travel trailers are not setting back far off the property line. Okay. But the cease and desist is based on the violation of the septic regulations. Oh, WTS. Okay, thank you. That's what I was wondering. Okay. Good. So what happens next? Uh, well, if we don't get the response, then we would have to go to court and um, seek a, a permanent injunction against him. To so the cease and desist said immediately or now, effective today? It was seven it? days from the date. Because I can't read it. Seven days. I and it was after seven days that she actually went out and sealed the property with her. Okay. She has about six Magic miles tape. of this tape. It ends up looking like a Christmas present by the time she <laughs> You wrapped it up for it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, today I was informed uh, that two of them are missing. Two of the travel trailers. Have been moved? Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's all. Well, you may be making too. progress there. Uh -huh. So everybody said he just went to sit in. Is that a separate violation? <laughs> Go so I just wanted to give you that heads up when somebody comes knocking on your door. And so you could give us a general indication of where this property is? Yeah, when you go out to the lake, you make a right or a left, right here, right before the fork. On the Can west side? Uh-huh, and there's just it's just a little triangle piece of property. Okay. Couldn't fit nothing on it. Privately, Couldn't you know, fit anything. Is just so they come and talk. I don't, don't make it public, but just in case they come talk, I understand what they're talking about. Okay. The letter says it's supposed to be further, but if they come directly to you next, well, I'm just going to turn it to you. If they do, but... As a friend of mine said, next, <laughs> next, next victim. It's like a barber shop, right? Okay. So the next thing is all those letters mm -hmm. are just for your information. Okay. You don't have to deal with anybody on that situation. Have you had any response to any of these letters? Yes. Okay. Positive or negative? Oh, everything's positive. Mm. All but the last two, but oh. that's the signs that are located in Wetmore. Okay. It's a for sale sign? Yes, there are for sale signs in there that don't meet our requirements. Okay. But that's just went out, so they ought to be taking them down. By Friday, they have to take them down. <coughs> that's it. You're not getting off that easy. Then we can stay. Um, I'm trying to find the letter again about the signs. They're the back. RVs without plates. 
as part of that cease and desist. 9019. Okay. Oh, that's real thick. That's my address to Mr. Cool. So, Mr. Cool, yeah, Steve. I got Cooley. another one here. Then, so there's more than one letter, right? right. Yeah, there's one to Sandy okay. Smith. Yeah. yeah the next one. All right, gotcha. Okay. And the Colonel Verdi one's what's that? Jackie. Well, they could have for variance, but you'd have to prove that. Nine zero zero two. May 14, Pinewood downtown. Commissioner Candace asking you a question about that. Mm -hmm. They added on two bedrooms without a permit. So they added a bedroom Five without days. a permit? No, added on two. Two. Bedrooms. Oh, two additional. Yeah, I see it now. One, one quick question. Yes, sir. Is there a special way of putting a for sale sign up? No, it's not how you put it up, what size it is. Oh, we have okay. Size. On okay. Signs. Ma'am, is there anything else you'd like to bring up to the attention of the commissioner today? I'm a little bored, so I'm good. No, you're not. <laughs> if I apply for the job that she's got open, can I Might still be, be the attorney on stuff? Yeah, it, it will double your pay. Is it HIPAA? I don't know. We'll go on the lamb. Jackie and I want to talk to you. That's why we're being weird to be good. Uh, I'm not weird. We would like to, sh we would like, if you're comfortable, to share with us your good news you've received recently about your family. Okay. I have a 38-year-old son who has cystic fibrosis, and he was doing pretty good until a couple of years ago. It caught up to him. Uh, he had a collapsed lung two years ago. Was it been on oxygen since then? And Back in January, uh, he qualified for a lung transplant. Last Thursday, he had his lung transplant, and he's doing great. I mean, he just sent me a text message this morning. All the tubes are out. He's walking. He's breathing completely with these new lungs, no oxygen or anything. Oh, wow. And they are actually, even though he was supposed to be in the hospital for at least a couple of weeks, they're thinking about releasing him this weekend. Oh, that's um, done last Thursday. Awesome. Last Thursday. Oh, Hard to believe. Get up and move. Hope you didn't mind us bringing that up. No, I appreciate We're that. I, I told him I was going to announce it to anyway, so thank you for giving me well, I, I think it's it's great. I think everyone should, well, the crowd's too old to donate. <laughs> well, there it is. Well, there it is. <laughs> Let's take Meredith's loan. Still you got, the, right? You got, yeah, you've still, made one still statement here. That, <laughs> and I was going to give him one of my own, but he's six foot two, and that's about a foot taller than I am. And, <laughs> and you actually, the lungs have to fit the lung cavity. It was the reason he waited as long as he did. It had some that came up, but you know, they weren't big enough for his lung cavity. Yeah. So, well, but he's, I mean, to me, it's like he's starting Act Two of his life. He has a second birthday That's last month, wow. May 16th. That's awesome. awesome. Very good. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Thanks, Jamie. Do I need to leave? Yes. Get out of here. <laughs> well, no, that last comment doing... cost you. <laughs> you like Way over your ten minutes. <laughs> I just wanted to point it out in case you old farts didn't grow it. <laughs> Yeah, we may. Okay, let's let's uh, see. No, 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 there's one more meeting. <laughs> All right. Uh, any unfinished business, gentlemen? I'd have none. Uh, if not, we'll move on to new business. Public comment will be allowed uh, right. on each of the items of business that is an action item. If we're going to vote on something, we'll allow public comment prior to uh, us voting. So. Uh, we have consideration for request for a subdivision waiver in TV Hills. Would you guys like to visit from there? Would you like to come forward? Um, it's up, whatever. We can do this if you're all right with that. Okay. Because if you came forward, we'd stand up, shake your hand, and <laughs> tell you how glad we are to have you here. So, uh, so we're glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, obviously, uh, we looked at your correspondence. Um, you would like to drill a well on your property? Correct. One well? On how many acres? Ten acres. Okay. And the states denied that request, correct? Correct. There's okay. actually two wells. There's his well, and then I 
and Sandy, I guess, too. We have three uh, within that subdivision like to drill a well. Yes. So instead of one, we're talking about three. Correct. And he has the, what the... Right. So they're each 10-acre lots. Here too. Uh -huh. They're all 10-acre lots. How many lots yes. in that subdivision? We have about 17 okay. lots. 17 lots. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just trying to get the facts here. Um, and I'll work on pulling up this map, if you don't mind, while we're talking. There's TV Hill subdivision, and then there's homes north of the subdivision. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so when you say 17 homes, do you mean in the actual TV Hills platted subdivision or in that general area? Big difference, in my opinion. Who services 17 homes on the well? Are they okay? But some of them, some, some of the homes are not, it, that they're servicing on the well are, are not. not in the subdivision. Okay. We had three homes prior that went off of the well to help us with the situation a few years ago. And I could name names, but I don't know if you really want me to or not. Doesn't matter and at right this now point. we have three other homes that are still on the on our well, which are not in the subdivision. Plus the fire department down there is on, on the same to. well. Okay. And so they've been using the water from our well for quite a while. And we're within those subdivision rules we're looking at. But they are not with parcels down there, so they're being supplied water. If their water runs out, or our water runs out to them, then uh, they can drill a well. Right. And apparently right now, with the situation we're in, we can't haul. Because they're not in a subdivision, and they're greater than 35 acres. Yeah. That's why they can drill a well, correct? No, no, no. Okay, hang on, let's, let's back up. Yep. We have really TV right. Hills 1 and TV Hills 2. Correct. You are in TV Hills, one, which was a subdivision that was approved in 1977 for 10 tracks. Okay. So when you look at the map, you look at 10 tracks of property, and I think you can count them here, because this should be all of TB Hills 1. Yeah, because TB Hills 2 is right over here. Right. And TB Hills 2 was never developed. Yes. So uh, now we're back to in order to get an approval for a subdivision, you need proof of water. So the proof of water for this subdivision was a community well, and there's this is tanks. in 1977. Yes, they, they they had ten lots, one well, and it's a storage thing above. It's locked, so and you probably don't even see, have never even seen it. And it's a uh, storage tank. In fact, five years ago, the BZA approved another tank to go up there. And Mr. Healy's the one that did this. They have a water decree for the water system. So it services all 10 lots. Plus, now, uh, Ron has just told you that it also services uh, the fire department and three more lots. But when he says that the three lots that it's a, he, you can't use that as a description, those three lots, because those three lots that got to drill a well were never in this subdivision. Okay, so their three lots, are they the, in that 10, that group of 10? No. So that's, those, these people's are, that's but the three lots that. that drilled the well were never in this subdivision, so don't even pay attention right. to that because that has nothing to do that's with right. this. All right, so just keeping it clean. So, Matt, you own, you own to the south uh, of McKinnon. Mm -hmm. Is that right? South. Yeah, south of McKinnon. There's a piece of property between you and your folks. Oh, right. And that's you. I didn't quite get your last name. That's why I was struggling. Okay, so those three contiguous lots, uh, Sandra, Matt, Matt, and Ron. Will you come and point out hers and yours and your dad's? These three right there. One, two, three. So, Sandra, you own between these two, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Comes up to 290. Right, contiguous lots, but she's between you two. This is me. And there is, this is Sandra. Yeah. This is you. Okay, Chandler. This is me. Sandra. And this is. Where's the well? 
Yes, sir. Well, story is uh, right up there. a well off it's a trinity below it's us. It's, it's got about, storage uh, tanks. It's close to a thousand feet away from all these. It's And was annual and more than two wells. Right. Well, this within probably about eight to nine hundred feet away from me. Everything on the map, we would be within the six hundred clearance of this. Uh huh. TV Hills too. It's also servicing. You TV said it was developed. Right in Ron there also. So you got all three of them like that. So these lo no. the lots in question were is in the wells were drilled. Mm -hmm. this we're along that. County Road 290. Okay. Just adjacent. Um, our system used to provide to some of these until they drilled a well. They had a fog, they all I don't know. We use the same Arkansas Valley. They have uh, years. Who are you talking Harden. about? Harden. 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 Harden's Christensen. Uh, That's good. They got the way. In fact, when they got their well, they didn't need to augment or anything. That was super, prior to 77. Yeah, this is super, super old. Yeah, well, those three. The Hardens was, was after 77. They, they might, I looked for a subdivision waiver on those three, and there wasn't one. Yeah. So the state allowed them to drill wells. So they have three wells. These, these but they were never on that. But they're never on that, well. so we don't even care. But, but, they, yes. but they did They did get their water from, from our, our wells. So why are they doing that? Are they still doing it? No. Okay. Well, one did for a while, and then okay. he finally so went on. Well. And then the, the no. fire station is down here, and it's with the cross the road is on our system currently. That fire station is already in the yes. Yeah, that, I think this would be Tabatoes. Yeah. They cross all the rest of Tom Heaney's land. Right. So there is water. He has a double wide. He, where his home is up here, he has a well for his home. He has a double wide trailer on this lot. The water is from our well. Oh, it is? Yeah. <coughs> Just yeah, the water that's precipitated is reflected this time. But has the well diminished? The well has water? diminished. <laughs> it's it's diminished more in the summer and the drought conditions I know it. I know it. Um, I know it. That's why we're concerned that it will, keep, will be able to continue yeah. to operate. One other concern we have is, is with all the state regulations coming down to provide water in a, in a water district like this, the expenses are getting more and more phenomenal for these few homes to keep maintaining as well. 389 is all granted. There we go. Thank you. You want to add three wells? Uh, that one is really well on each side. You want to put three wells? One, two, three? Yes. They're, they're separate. Do you meter the usage from the well now? Is it each house? Each house has a meter. It pays 175. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a meter. 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 Just to maintain it. Yeah, we're still losing. Yes, this was granted in the Brown Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. And any other property. That was a three story that was there. They're getting yeah. community water. We have been looking at that. From the tanks. But let me tell you something. This was 1977, and it's all your subdivision. In order for you to grant a subdivision waiver, you are going against the subdivision regulations. Just to the left of the garden. That subdivision was set up to only to be operated on. Uh huh. So, in order for them to even be granted a well, you would have to contact all these people in here and have them say that they could be off and the and take it. Because you're going to have to go back to the planning. And they would have to go and augment water somewhere. Yeah, they got to buy the rights. Who would these guys? How are they going to get the right to drill the well? Because we're going to get a subdivision waiver. Oh, just based on the subdivision itself. That's what they're asking. They're asking for a subdivision waiver of Senate Bill 35, which gives them the right because they've been turned down by the state because the state looked in and said, wait a minute, you have a water decree. Uh, so they need, if they yeah, want to drill their own wells, they have to have a subdivision waiver of okay. Senate Bill 35. 
But in the uh, same no, sense, you, are, you, know our you better pay attention to the so subdivision regulations that was enacted in when this went, because yeah. then you're going to precedent because we're going to have problems with yeah. everyone. Because you I, I can't actually, allow the, the this person, this person, this person to get well and not all of them. So, let's back up a little bit. Other subdivisions as well that we can But they could go through the planning commission and get permission, and then the recommendation would either be approved or disapproved and come back on your. Oh, that basically. Yeah, they're going back. The guys that got a lot of work a few years ago, within three years ago, one of them was to help alleviate this situation. Well, it's going down to like eight gallons. These guys, that you're talking about here. So our well is failing. So under those circumstances, hopefully, that you consider with Fred Jackie. Okay, so how did he draw a well without a subdivision waiver? Who? Those three guys. So the three guys here. Sorry. Uh -huh, because the state allowed it, but the state's not allowing these people right. to, to drill. I guess my question is too is. What was that? We did years Well, old? the well was set up for this subdivision. Right. When that was set up, Mr. Healy owned all this. So we had no say in what Mr. Healy did with the well. He granted people the right to be on our well that was not in the subdivision. We still have homes that are not in the subdivision that's on that well. We had no control to do that. Now our well is diminishing. We don't have a right to tell those people you can't use that. I, you know what I'm saying? Right. Let me ask you a couple more. Number one, how long have you guys owned your property? Four years. It's been, it's been in your family. You've given him no, no, own lot. Okay. I've been here over my career. I well, he's 40 years. 18 years. 18 years. Okay. Let me ask you something. In, in from your guys' perspective, why? Throw it back. Up. Why wasn't this subdivision? I mean, obviously, in 1972, Senate Bill 35 came in and and dictated you had to have 35 acres to drill a well. So. Have you? What I'm trying to get at is, do you think you're going to impact the water table and the aquifer by drilling yeah, these three wells? I don't see how it would. Yeah. You're talking about a community well yeah. up there. Yeah. We're that's affecting that by drilling a well down. No, what no, I'm not asking that because, that because I know the community wells above hill. Anybody, right? But anybody I below you. Now, there's a reason that the state of Colorado said we're not going to allow. 10 wells on the subdivision because they knew that would deplete the water table. Right? I mean, that's why the 35 acre subdivision. Would they apply? Did they show the performance of that one well? Wouldn't they have said that's camp? Did they provide enough water for all the lots? Uh, I think they probably went through that. Who knows? I'm trying to think that through. Then you piggyback three more wells on there. So I'm, I'm sympathetic to your situation. I am. And we're only asking a domestic it's right. 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 And you're also asking us to open ourselves up for how many other domestic wells right there. But if we come to you as each individual person, we don't, the other people don't seem to be very interested besides us. They are not now, but I guarantee you, if your well's failing, and we're trying to be proactive where we can I understand that. If we can sometimes yeah. do a lot of other people that can begin to afford a well, we have water. If we don't, then we're just all going to run out of water. How many water. gallons a minute are we getting now? Eight. And, and, and 16 right now. How far is that well from you guys? How far is that well from you guys? Your community well. Here, here. Us. Well, this would be highly unusual. We have granted subdivision waivers, but only when a public road bisects a property. Yeah. Uh, so I, I. So if our this is just looking down the road. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do. If this well goes down. Yeah. What are our options right. then? None? Oh, really? Yeah, you'd have to haul water until the 
I'm assuming it's a subdivision owns that well now or does he use the old one? We own it now. Right. He leaves it. Yeah. Okay. And we own the land. So if it goes down, you'd have to haul water until you got it re drilled and back up and running. Well, it's not just the geology of it. The well goes out and runs out. A big part is the state regs. Um, every year, of yeah. course, they treat us no different in Westcliff, Colorado system. Or Colorado Springs. I mean, it's a, it's not as simple as okay, it goes out, we drill it. We can barely see. These guys, they charge 175 bucks a month for each individual. It's still, we're still at a loss each year. See, I'm still having a problem with why we have the authority to grant a well in the first place yeah. after it's been in without augmenting water. I don't, I don't get it because it's a 35 acre rule. <laughs> but the counties have the authority to to bypass. We, we can bypass the thirty-five yeah, acre yes, one in, it's in, it's anywhere. Uh -huh. well, it's like we, we're allowed to. I, I understand, but, but the state did that. The county yeah, didn't allow that. That's correct. 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 Well, I, I cannot find anything uh, for the on that. No, no, no. But it's called a subdivision waiver, of Senate Bill thirty-five. It gives the counties the authority okay. to grant wells. But we only grant them when the county has taken your lot and put a county road through it. Or state highway. Or a state highway. Which we just did that. Uh -huh. But I am I'm saying that they there's still another option here. If they get all, everyone in here to come, because this is a subdivision as a whole that was approved, you can come before the planning commission. And, yeah, and uh, they would either recommend or disapprove it. But you got to get everybody in that subdivision on board for this. So, <laughs> like well, I said now, before, go ahead. The, and he's so we don't need the there. people that are on the water outside the subdivision. That's something that you would bring up during uh, yeah, testimony. You may, uh, you may have to. But still, can I ask you a hypothetical question? Right right if these. And I understand these are about 10 acres uh, each, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's just assume that the three of them combined yeah. Yeah. added up to 30. Just where I was headed, yeah. sir, and it does. If they vacated those lines, had some kind of agreement yeah. among themselves, that really doesn't matter. it wouldn't well, take it up. No, because it's 35 you're acres. bringing them out of compliance now. Yeah. Because no. you are looking at a platted subdivision and you're only allowed one well and right. one dwell. I'm not in favor of that. So even you if you vacated the property. Uh-huh. Right. So you, you just, just you're, you're, you're even diminished more. You <laughs> just we own the property. Right. We we own the subdivision, all the homeowners well. do. All the homeowners out there own the well. Right. How? And we wouldn't put it in our covenants to exclude that provision in there for yeah, you know sure. not being able to drill well <laughs> So the people are agreeing in that respect because nobody else is really too interested in drilling the well. We'd like to be proactive to help the other people out. We know we can't drill. Which, which is so I'm really thinking we're going to have a hard time getting everybody together to come together on that when they're not even interested in drilling the well. And so they don't have to be interested. Oh, you But this is going to put. Um, you have the option to go through the planning commission. That's the only option I see at this point in time is going through the planning commission, but you're going to have to get everyone in here on agreement to go before the planning commission and say, hey, we don't have no problem with these three drawing walls. But if they agree to that, then they have just circumvented the subdivision regulations. I've been doing some study well, today on but, this. But not on their own. They're still going to have to get approval from the Board of County Commissioners. You're right. Uh -huh. I am absolutely opposed to violating a subdivision regulation unless the subdivision approves the change. Then, if the subdivision says we have we have amended our regulations to allow us to come, then we should move forward. Yeah. You signed a, a subdivision regulations, an agreement, it's an agreement between the owners. I'm not going to circumvent that. No, and actually you knew that the water system was like this prior to moving here. The only reason that you have now is stating these are the 10 lots that were in the subdivision that got to use this water. Then you come before the board and you say, these 10 lots are using the same water, but these three people have hooked onto the water without agreement. 
and stuff. They okay. might Run. recommend to the commissioners, uh, but they're putting themselves in a very bad peril if they allow this to happen. Because then the next person's going to come in and say, wait a minute. I live in this subdivision and I have a community well because this isn't the only, and they'll want a well. And yeah, it sounds nice, they, and I know the cost of this because Horn Creek, every, Horn Creek has to do the same thing. They have to have their water tested. You're not the only one out here that's paying this price for this water. But Jackie, our well is 40 years old. So, when it was 280 something dollars a minute yeah. to start with, it's down to about eight gallons a minute, and you've got 17 homes on it. Things are looking bad, and Tom Healy awesome. always reiterated if something goes down with this well, you, you guys can feel welcome. It. No problem. You like it. Yeah. And so, we, we would like to be considered. And I Some think type of real estate that has some documentation program, got that piece of paper on the board, but let's have the basic weight. All right, right, right on I have road right road. next to Jackie. I will get your same peril. Yeah. The bottom line is they already have an issue. And if with all 10 of them get together, we got an issue yeah, with how we're going to continue to survive. Yeah. Spring. And we have options. Yeah. And they're asking yeah. for a waiver to, to grant the you won't new do well to be drilled. I think that can be standing on its own merits, but to discuss it and adjust their 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 binding rules on themselves. For them. so they, already have. they already have. That so, does it. So to do what? To, to say so you could drill a well? All in. these guys agree. Yes. Correct. Why are you just so as far as what you were asking them to do in the first place? No. What that were you asking? I them? But then come to you. They have with to go. A request. They have to go to the planning Yeah, commission. that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's what, basically. And what we've said, as long as they all come as a, a union. A group to the planning and commission. Get a proposal to you, and then, then that's the recommendation they bring to the county. But see, Bill, Just as an association, they recorded a piece of paper. Right. It doesn't mean nothing. I know. So I can record my dog's print. Right. So, so that piece of paper is null. Because they got a subdivision, they got approval for a subdivision with this water. So the only thing they get is to come back, and that means every one of them. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But EPR grants. Sounds like they, they're willing to do that. And you're willing to do that. I have a question. I mean, they all want to drill about. Oh, right, because you do. Yeah. It would so make a difference on what, what we think about how many wells would it make sense. But, but, okay. but you can go to the planning uh, with whatever proposal you've got yeah, and, exactly. and, and make sure it's know, it's reason, and they'll reason it out and decide, well, maybe you can do this, maybe one, or whatever. Yeah. They need to come to us then with that recommendation. Okay. So that's within the scope of what yeah. Jay is saying, of the agreements that you all had set up in the first place or have changed legally. Mm -hmm. Can I... I was wondering, I was just trying to think about, say somebody came, and I'm sure there's some sort of report that somebody wants to start a subdivision, comes to you and you say, what's your water? I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> Why she wears dark blouses. You want to see the white one. Oh my God, did you see me drove? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I guess my question would be, what does a developer need to provide to you to prove that they have an adequate water, water source well, for a new engineering and all that jazz? That's really interesting because in 1977, Custer County didn't yeah, ask uh, for much. Right. So well, in 1977, yeah, when this subdivision got approved, uh, Healy proved that this community well would service these 10 lots. Yeah, then so Tabato gave you some more water. The state right? New York because uh, the when Tabato bought all of the PC's land, okay. and that was the well that was in Okay, so Tabato actually gave you some the well. property. Uh -huh. So Tabato already made sure that they had the, the well thing. And then, so now the well is failing. And so now you got to come and up that with was my question. Yes. In, my, in my mind, I think of a waiver. There is a purpose for a waiver, or it wouldn't be there. And I think of, okay, if a developer came in and gave you the specs engineering on the performance of that well today, would you grant that subdivision? No. I would say no. And that's where I'm thinking, of, okay, we're in this situation. Right. We're trying to look ahead down yeah. the line a little bit. Nobody wants to haul water if we don't have to. We all agree to that. But if there's a waiver and there's a way to alleviate some stress, 
and that's what you have to show us. You don't want anybody else to do it. And you're going to have to, whatever they think you have to prove to show that there's enough water or where you're going to drill it isn't going to injure somebody. And we would have to, yeah, the state has, I think, 600 feet. They have their, it is. and we're not going to say it's 600 feet. I suggest that we're very premature company. Right. This needs to go to the planning commission, uh, planning commission, and let them grapple with these questions, and yeah, let's let the them come and event. Ultimately, they'll come to us for recommendation. I feel that's a need to follow the procedure. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they didn't do well. Can I ask you a question? Do you have cisterns on this property also? No. 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 Okay. And then um, I... There are members up here that do have cisterns. Because of the... I, I, I'm very sympathetic to your plight. I just have some major concerns that there's an agreement in place with the owners that, that prohibits what you're asking us to do. We need to have that taken care of. And it really needs to go to the planning division because that's what we have here. But I'm very sympathetic. Yeah, I mean, really. the last thing in the world I want you to do is have a home over here and have no home. I mean, that makes no sense. And, and, and the other thing you guys ought to be aware of, these three guys here, they're off. So what? They still have the right, they were part of the agreement initially mm -hmm. to use this well up here, weren't they? No. That they told not, us they were all... Tom sold it to them. No. Tom put them on the water, but there, well, I don't know there was agreement that they... You told us that this well was originally set up to service 10 homes. From here up. Right. Okay. Okay. But these, these he guys were on... He those three or four down there on. Yeah, whatever it is, wherever they are. There's three or four that's off of it now. We still have three that are on yeah. outside. Well, that's up to you guys to get them all. And is it not your well? I mean, you said that your association yes. owns it. Why are you giving them the water? They're taking your water. Well, just like Debbie said. You know, and all these people Neely's were put on. Dealings, and we didn't own the well. Well, not, but but you, you, you agreed you owned the well. We didn't own the well. We didn't own the well. Well, historically, there's um, always also, been when we do that, we will so. kick the fire station off. Right. They should. They should. Yeah. That's crazy. That so they would that's be on that domestic right? as, as ridiculous that's as that sounds, I understand. Yeah. Listen, and it's a procedure that I'm concerned about. Right. Uh, in, in, in equity, I want to say, forget all the yeah. water you're going to have to resolve how to fix We don't want to hurt your community, but we would kick your fire department off if we're going to do that. And somebody had to figure out how to drill a well for them. <laughs> so, the fire department get rid of this. <laughs> so, that's a factor, and, and it also speaks to your community mindedness. So, Right, and I would mean, use that as a leverage point. I think that's what Jack was saying. Right, they use that with the plan. You're part of the problem. Your timing couldn't be worse. We just spent six months fighting Upper Arc for wanting to do exactly what you guys were wanting to do. And we've been this for a year. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Philosophically, we are at vehemently opposed to this whole plan, not you guys, this idea of letting people drill wells on less than 35 acres. Same old, same old, and, and all the people that have the most drilled on 10 acres. The last one within the last two years drilled on 10 acres. All the people out there were in that yeah. all the day. You guys have, you have the present, you, well, this already exists, so that there has to be options, but what Tom is saying is right, I mean, it's good. That's the rule, right? 31 well, 35 acres. And if we would have known that that was going to be a well 40 years ago, we probably would have right. done sure. what we did. Right. Who, ha who has drilled in there in the last couple of years? Casey Christian. Casey Christian, uh, Frank Harden. Frank Harden. Jack's was quite, oh, Jack Harden's was quite they a just while. got off of it. Jack and, Fra and uh, Casey got off two years ago. Frank got off with probably been the list this year, so probably six Chelsea. months. Jack Harden was actually on it too. Okay. He got off so Jack, really well. Frank and, and Casey. Well, and Casey. The part that I don't I, I hear all these rules and regulations and I hear people you know, you you don't drill a well for ten acres or less. And my question with the state is what did they look at to give these? There's a well here. There was a well. And that's here. why I was asking. Who and those why people did they look? Mm -hmm. You know, they uh, they allowed in this 40 acre stretch. They allowed all these wells. Right. And we're being told. How long ago was that actually? 
Casey's was two, two years, years ago. Two years ago. Casey was two years ago. And the reason that's Makes part you wonder of, why they're not doing it now. Well, and that's well, part of the peril so we have is question. every time another user drops off, that's 175 bucks a month. We don't have to buy our bills. Right. So we're at that tipping point. It right. takes one or two more because right. I'm on the board, the water board. It takes one or two more. And the system cannot financially sustain itself. And it takes one more state regulation that says you need a million dollar retention bond because we don't look at you any different than Silver Cliff or West Cliff, even though you're 18 homes on one well. Right. And so we're basically, and that's why we're here, it's, it's not just the water, it's not just the regulations, it's, it's the money. Right. It, it's everything wrapped in this one little ball that takes one day and we're all out of water. So if we but a letter from the state says, cease and desist, you're out of compliance. Because so we can't afford the regulations. That's, that's, that's but the converse good. side of that is every time somebody goes off of your system, it's one less 8,000 gallon pressure on that well right. as well. Right. And that's absolutely. That and, may not and offset told the cash flow to keep your water getting. We've running. told the association, yeah. we, if we could get a well, we've talked to Dan Hendricks, is that uh, commissioner? So listen, meter it. Put a meter on our wellhead. I mean, we need a backup plan, so when something happens, we're not six months out from digging a cistern and, and doing everything else, but we'd stay on the system. However, however the state wants to handle that, if that keeps the, the association, the money coming in, fine. We're just looking for indoor water. We just want indoor water. I don't have, I, that's mine, me and, me and yeah, dad, for sure. It's just yeah. indoor water. but. So we're, we're willing to work however we want. So like you said, we're, we're willing to pay the money to help keep the association together. We're trying to be proactive and put right. everybody out there. We're willing to pay that. Yeah. And stay yeah. Just like you said. I personally totally get where you're coming from. Yeah. You don't want to wait till you're dry and then go, now what? I get it. But there are procedures that have to be followed. And I'm, and I'm sorry to tell you that. And even though we could say, sure, go ahead and do it. I mean, we just can't. We yeah, have we're to saying follow we'll, the we'll go You go through the yeah. procedures. You we just need to know what they are. Them. And that's what we'll I think we need to do. If it were me, I would that's darn right. sure research why the state allowed those three wells down there. I agree with that. That would be the first thing I would go look at, say, and, and, who and who to look for some precedents. I'd start with uh, your commissioner down here, Henry, and then try to get to uh, Division Two water, and if not, go to Colorado Water Resource. Division. Yeah, we have the letter, and, like say, they want to work. And find out. Yeah. And you could research these well permits should be on file in Custer mm -hmm. County to find out. No, no. You go online. So you oh, yeah, state. Yeah, no, sorry. it's the state. You can yeah. go online and, and research wells. Well permits. When it comes to Division 2. But uh, you can see, because I researched uh, Harden, and there's nothing mm -hmm. in our clerk system that states that he got a subdivision waiver. Yes, because he was never in. So something, but, well, yeah, he wasn't in was not. But then Jack Carter was. My point is, is this, why did the state allow this? Look. That's what you said. And I just did Harden. I did Harden. Yeah, he was in the original subdivision. And then Frank Harden. Well, that might be because it wasn't so. But we don't know. Casey Christensen, I thought. Well, no. Could be. But see, he was allowed to use the water from the original subdivision. Frank was already But he was not in the original plot of the past. I don't know about Jack, but I can't find nothing. Yeah. Right. Just the ten Division two would be your first bet. Yeah, just, just that ten acres down in Pueblo. Because I don't know how many. research I would do before the going to the planning commission is try to figure so out how, why, on what grounds did the state authorize wells permits down there on another map on less than thirty-five acres? Okay, thirty-five acres is a magic number. And it, but I think I, these are household use only. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No. Don't matter. Okay. It's either 35 or it's not 35. And you have an augmentation plan already set in place for 10 acres, and you have to set in place for 35 acres, isn't that correct? No, you don't have to have an aug plan for 35 acres. Well, 90% of your water goes to your septic system anyway. So. <laughs> no, believe it or not, engineers will say if you have a septic system, you're gonna your water your consumptive water loss is less than 5%. Because it does, you're right, it does go through that septic system, but it goes back into the groundwater recharge system. Right. 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 So the consumptive loss is what the issue is. And on a septic system, 5%. So we consume 5% of what we 
So your 8,000 gallons, if that's an in-house only well, you're using five. You're using five percent of that according to the state. The yeah. rest of it goes back into the ground. And we basically average about 3,000 gallons. So we do. Right. Try Most to be very households out there. Right. Are about 3, now let's talk about in-house or not yeah. exempt or not exempt. Are you? Do, would you be satisfied with an in-house only well? No gardening, no I, hose bibs, no washing the car. I have eight horses, so I'm going to have to stay on the system <laughs> to to water my eight horses. And either that, to and I'm going to either that, or I'm going to have to haul the water. So right. I'm. We're willing to stay on the system and help pay right. the system. Yeah. Price. So you'd use. Yes, we are willing. If you had a well, you'd use it and the water system. Do use the water system to deal with your livestock. Right. And that what way I'm we saying could, is, you get further with going in house only. To keep right. everybody we're, else going. Yeah, Tom, we're willing to do that to keep they the rest of them going. Get anything but an in house use only well. Yeah. Because okay. they have less than 35 acres. Right. Yeah. They don't even have a choice. <laughs> well, they do if you could find augmented water to buy. Technically. If you could find somewhere else to go buy augmentation water, then you could get an exempt well. But you're right. Right now, it we're would be non I mean, yet. it would it'd be non exempt. Right, because they don't have an additional water source. So, my feeling right now is this is not an emergency situation as we sit here at this moment. No. At this moment. Yeah. But it will be sometime down the future if the trend continues. Mm -hmm. So we have time to do this properly. Mm -hmm. like, let's, I, I, I agree with the chairman Flower. Let's get some information on it. Why did you approve that? You won't approve these. I'm very concerned, like I said just a moment ago, circumventing um, your, your regulations that you have. That's just not appropriate. That's why we have regulations, so that we all have a say in what goes on. So let's just go through the channels and go through the planning commission. Ultimately, we'll come back here, and I don't know what will happen, but I always listen, but not always. I pay very close attention to what the planning commission recommends to us, because they're the experts. So. And that's kind of how I feel. You look at the big picture, your, your, your horse water, you still own this, even if you drill these wells. Right. Well, that's what so we're you saying. still be able to that's have a bigger plan. So just I understand. Right. It, yeah. Yeah, it'll, so, I don't want to use the word augmentation. Right. It'll but, increase the right. volume of water available to the subdivision. Right. I get that. You can get away with it. You this. take off this, no, no, and you have more well, water right. to do the rest yeah, uh, go, go do your homework. And I, I, think you can make I expect another question somebody along the line is going to ask you is, in this subdivision, how many animals are you being watered? Right. How much of that water is going to non-in-house use only? Mm -hmm. And if you've got 65 head of horses in there, you're not going to get much sympathy from anybody. Yeah. We don't. Yeah, we don't have What'd you sign up to the amount of horses it is going to set up? When they all came in with some agricultural use. He was allowing five head of livestock. Well, that so that's what you're bound to the state. Right. Right. No, there was five. no limit on horses. It was five, and then you had to have the rest in stalls. That's how it was. Okay. The state did ask for the covenants, as I've read the change in covenants, that looks good, but we still need a deed that shows the parcel is a pre-1972 parcel. Right. Evidence that the parcel yes. is exempt from the county subdivision rules right. or, or an approved augmentation plan in order right. to issue that's a right. permit. And that's, that's exactly, exactly to the letter. You have to go buy that and get your own augmentation. It costs a lot of money. But it, it says if we just have a subdivision exemption, right. they'll issue a permit. Right. So that's what we're trying right. to do. Yeah. That's, that's concerning yep. to now, us. Now, when was the subdivision planted? 77? 77. 77. Yeah. So see, you missed that free 72. Well, it was actually 77. 72 was when the well was drilled, I believe. Well, but the well, subdivision, yeah, the subdivision was set up in 77, but it was 72. grandfathered into that 72. Well, Tom Healy told us a lot. Yeah. 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 So this is grandfathered into the 72 that well there. See, that's worth the money. I mean, you can drill it, you can do whatever to keep that water going. But with them going outside so of the subdivision, yeah. Yeah. when they decided yeah, to that was water the all issue. outside that's the exactly subdivision, right. that's somebody, where you started to get screwed, right? right. Yeah. They put us into all these state regulations. Yeah, and I blame the state for part of that. The state never should have allowed that. They should have never permitted that well for 17 houses. That's ridiculous. But in those days, it was 280 that gallons a minute. 72. That so that's 72. different. And now we're down to 8 gallons. No, it's 8. Yeah. yeah. 8, eight gallons. Yeah. 8 gallons. Eight gallons that's service 280 gallons. Oh, it's like you're saying, is it an emergency? It could be today. 
It could be tomorrow. I understand that. So it sounds pretty good. good. I can come to us and say my well is dry. I think that's a different story. Well. Seven hundred and the pump's at six ninety five. So we've lowered we've the pump. Told yeah. There's not much more room we can go down. Yeah, no, we're free drill. Yeah. We're sucking button now. Which we have exhausted, and we're still trying to find grant money through oh, the yeah. state, through small water, and, and nothing's been funded. Oh, you're water underneath. Well, you're it's looking down there, forty-five dollars a foot, probably. Yeah. Uh, right. Forty-two. We have Arkansas Valley. Yeah. yeah, fifty bucks a foot, thirty-five. Think of that. Yes. Yeah. And we and we yeah. we can barely keep the lights on right, right now. And they can do well, the I think. Commissioner Prince is right. Let's kind of close this down. Um, I do little. This me just giving you some unofficial well, we advice. advice. But I would try to do the research on those why those were allowed to be drilled separately because that would set precedence for you if they could say, well, because they came and pleaded. A, okay, so we're going to do the same thing. So you're looking for precedence, a reason why they allowed those wells to, should have never been done according to the law. So there's got to be something going on. This is what I believe. Um, I believe that the three wells that were allowed at the bottom where your hand is is drilled, it was platted. Those were platted before the subdivision. So you had all these platted lots down here, and well, you were allowed, wait a minute, they were allowed a well. The but before then, the subdivision or before yes. 1972? Before the subdivision. These were, Healy owned this big chunk. Right. So these were all platted, these three down here were platted prior For to For the hardens or somebody. Well, I don't know who, who owned it, but hard at the bottom. Okay, and somebody else. So this is already platted, just like a plat that you buy a piece of property off. Then Healy thought, well, I'm going to subdivide this. So he subdivided this in 10 lots, and he had to provide water. At this time, it was probably adequate sure, at 70 and 77. People added on to it. So I... Yeah, don't believe that this is this is not have nothing to do with this. No, I agree. So I wouldn't even worry about this. I've already checked on why, and that's how come I think that those three were in a, already a platted subdivision. But uh, Jack, the, I don't see why a platted piece of property would circumvent Senate Bill 35. Because it was platted before Prior 1972. That's what I asked you. My pillow. That's, that's what <laughs> you <laughs> said. It was platted before the subdivision, right? Before you seventy-seven. Said it, you said it was platted before the subdivision. I said, "Well, was that before 1972? If it was, then yeah, she's exactly well, she, right. If that's before 1972, this was 72. You don't have here. a leg to stand on with those three pieces of property down there. Because it's right. parcel. And just do. Yeah. One thing you but could do is Jack buy the water from them to augment this. <laughs> Seriously, they already had the well. No, because those will yeah. be domestic use only wells. <laughs> yeah, prior to 70, well, well, that's right, they just so we drilled. We don't know if it was prior to 72 or not, those three. Right. Yeah, but guess, yeah that would be a start. I guess mainly, guys, you know, we own the property, and we own the subdivision, Tom Healy does that, and we own the well. Can we go ahead and make our own rules now? <laughs> uh, you can see how far you get with the state. <laughs> You've already run into that, right? I'm going to like call the state, they say you got to deal with the county. Then right. the county, they got to deal with the state. Right. Well, you got to understand now. So you're asking a political subdivision of the state <laughs> to make a decision that they didn't allow, right? I mean, it's like going to mom and dad. Yeah. Now, dad said I couldn't, so I'm going to go to mom. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same philosophical approach. Uh, we can circumvent that, should we? I don't know. I really don't. Uh, I'm concerned about groundwater there and depletion. That's what we've been screaming it up our heart for, for intensely since Je December. Is if you drill a well here, are you going to affect and deplete water for for your neighbors? We believe it is. We believe that you cannot drill a well in this ground without having negative impact on the cone of depletion. The 600 foot, right? We still believe there's a lag depletion that's going to affect other well owners. So, there, so what about the difference between uh, aquifer? Because I'm looking at an underground creek. Is there any difference? Uh, surface depends. water basically is if what it's, we're getting. We're looking at surface yeah. water. Uh, well, you won't be with a well. That 
that won't be considered surface water. Uh, it's it's under a hundred. Uh, hundred feet and less. Well, that, that's the thing too, is the Trinity Ranch is just within 70 feet of us. They have five cooked wells, and the well that's pretty close to us is the best producer. But it's 35 gallons a minute. Well, they, well, they only went 35 feet. 35 feet. I don't know how much per minute it is. Yeah, Christensen's went down. Yeah, Christensen's went down. Yeah. They're at 35, 40 feet. And where we are down here, with Sandy and us, you know, right, right in here, we're on the lower end of this, where we, I think we have a pretty good chance of possibly, when we had Arkansas Valley up, they thought we had a pretty good chance of getting some water, and it might be just surface water, like you're saying. But these other guys up here, they're up on top of the mountainside, and we're, you know, they had to go 600 and some feet ago. You know, here at the main well, we, oh, boy, you're going to impact all of these downstream. It doesn't matter. We're doing the impact of it. If, if that geologic flow is that direction, that is, and then can, this one. Can you see where 40 years ago? That's all the question. No one thought it was like that. No, that's exactly right. So we, that's why it should have never been allowed. Exactly. But we're, it was, and we brought it. Yeah. So we're paying the consequences right. of some decisions yeah. that we had no control of. Yeah, I think, I, I think this commission is sympathetic to your plight. Why didn't you make two? It doesn't mean they're going to override <laughs> the recommendations yeah. one way or the other. But, yeah. right. well, for me as a commissioner, I don't want you to walk out of here and go, I'm going to jerk water. I think I when I read that first letter, I thought that was the most well thought out, well reasoned letter to state your yes, that's what position I and the reason why and what you need that we could expect. So you did a good job of that. Um, <laughs> I, I would say we'll have to wait to see what the commission says. Okay. Then we can have this conversation again if we need to. Would that be here or where would that be? Uh, we could probably schedule it at a meeting oh. down here. Yeah. Yeah. When you get it right. Uh, most of the year, our mid month meetings are here. Not all of them, because we do a couple in San Bell and one over at the airport. But other than that, we're down here. Yeah, we're not worried about where so, uh, but uh, Vic Barnes is the chairman of the planning commission. Uh, Jackie, Jackie kind of handles the agenda, so if you weren't on that agenda, you'd talk to her. But I guess, Tom, somebody said in the meeting, too, you said that the uh, planning commission is the only commission where all the same thing. Well, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> but I did hear that, yeah. that in the minutes. Yeah. Jackie? It's the Board of Zoning Adjustment, and then the planning commission. But it's the same people. In the same office. So I've been guilty yeah, of doing what Jay did. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Well, you know, well, his no, plan, no, his no, plan no, so you no, 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 that was the yeah. yeah. field so, of uh, the, the fire station. Uh, he was going to put that all uh, in. Uh, and that uh, was well. Uh, well uh, it was like 300 uh, uh, yeah. 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 Thank you. I'm getting yeah. ready to end up. Send it to Ron and Ron can send it out. Okay. Okay. Next item. Thank you for your help. Resolution 1904. Uh, budget resolution. I've got the hard copy. So this is um, appropriating funds for some work done at the airport in the uh, amount of three thousand six hundred dollars. What's the group's budget? I move that we approve resolution nineteen dash zero four for the allocation of thirty six hundred dollars. I'll second. So we're moving to second it to approve uh, resolution nineteen dash zero. Four, a resolution appropriating additional sums of money to defray expenses in, ex in excess of amounts budgeted for Custer County. Debate, discussion. Uh, we had a budget for the airport, and it did not include this $3,600. We were given this $3,600, so we need to basically amend the budget to allow for that. So this is all six money that yes. has come yes. into come the in. county, and now you're just diverting it into right. the airport. Into the budget, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it's not yeah it'll be expended, it obviously. For uh, engineering. Further discussion? Public comment? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried.
We will sign this baby. Thanks, Ruth. I'll call you. Okay. Guys, wish you luck. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Appreciate it. It feels like two pages. It is. It probably is. So I discovered how comfortable the meetings go so long. Pardon? I discovered why the wet war meetings go so long. Okay. Jackie? Always comes down here to do it. Yeah, why did she do that? She never talks us up there. She doesn't take the heat up there. See? Unless she's gone now, be done in five minutes. Yeah, yeah, we'll rock and roll. Uh, yeah. The next item discussion, or the next item on the uh, agenda is discussion of the uh, of some excavation at the landfill. And I asked uh, Meredith to put that on the agenda because I want to start this conversation. I visited with Rusty a little bit, <clears throat> uh, subsequent to finding out when he went to get the excavator. Sorry, not an excavator. It'll come to me. Um, the scraper. The scraper. That it wasn't available, and then scared with hen's teeth. And I said, what about considering leasing one locally or hiring it done, which we hadn't really talked about. Rusty's always done that. So uh, he did a little research. And I have visited with Kent Beach twice about the possibility of hiring Cypher Enterprises just to finish that trench. And Kent Beach would like to sit down with us in a workshop and have a, a conversation but about the not to do it. It wouldn't be out for bid or just to uh, we, Yeah, I think just like the airport, we'd probably have to put it out for bid because it's going to be in the neighborhood of 75000 bucks. Um, so Kent's idea was, I said, well, here's the problem, it looks like to me, that if we were to go and hire anybody to do it in one fell swoop, the price is going to be between 70 and 75 grand. Then we're going to have to pay that all at once. If we piecemeal this with Rusty, he can do it over... Which looks say three years. Yeah, it doesn't have to be all open. Then you have twenty two thousand a year. Um, it's actually twenty five thousand a year when you plug in the fuel cost, roughly. So, yeah. I think the cost difference between us renting a scraper and doing it and hiring somebody to do it's going to be negligible, a couple thousand bucks. Uh, the problem is the availability of these scrapers and the additional cost of having it trucked in here. Which is six thousand bucks yeah. or something crazy. So and to be honest with you, if we're gonna spend money, I'd rather spend it locally if we can. So I would propose that we set up a workshop with Kent, at least to hear out some concepts. We're not, I don't think we wanna to indicate to him, yeah, you got the job, let's just hammer out the details. Let's hear what you have to propose and then we're We've got to put it out to bid anyway. It doesn't matter. I think we just need to tell him that the policy says it has to go out for bid. It has nothing right. to do with whether we like him or right. don't like him. Right. But he could give us information that will help us right. make the determination. The problem yeah. is, uh, is there a conflict of interest kind of thing where he has a leg up because he knows more about it than somebody that's just going to get it flat out here bid on this kind of thing? Well, I think... Uh, I can't quote you the number exactly. I'm, I'll throw a number out there and say it's uh, 55,000 cubic yards. So we asked somebody to submit a bid to remove 55,000 cubic yards in a trench right. where it's smaller at the bottom than it is at the top. They, they excavate their way down. Then I'd say no, probably don't. What would be the reason then to have a conference with it? Well, okay, it's a great point. I never finished my thought. So, Kent said to me, well, if that's an issue, this whole 75000 at once would have not been budgeted, he said maybe we look at breaking that up into three payments over 18 months' time or whatever. I don't know. We didn't get into those specifics, but uh, he said I, would, I wouldn't have to have all the money at the completion of the job. That's what he said to me. Because I told him we didn't have a budget. <clears throat> so then you would uh, have to put that in, if we're going to put it out for bid, that would be the way you present it to anybody. <coughs> you know. Are you talking about doing the whole job? Yeah, seven. Cut the hole. And then well, you can't agree to, you can't commit future boards 
to a payment like that. You, you can have these lease purchase agreements, but to, to actually have a job done and agree that you will pay this, you can't do it that way. Okay. Okay. Um, go ahead, sir. If I may. I would ask the question of it's going to cost the same amount of money we either pay it now or we pay it in three payments. Um, I, I don't see any reason why we would want to, why don't we want to, we're not saving anything by putting it out over a longer period of time. It's going to cost the county taxpayers the exact same money right. whether we pay it now or later. Right. I mean, it's because it was an unbudgeted item. Well, I understand that. That was the only reason. Out of the general fund. And, um, but that's why we have a general fund so that we can okay. use it for things like this. Um, you know, it's obviously a necessity. It's not like we're, you know, doing something frivolous. Uh, we have to have a hole in the ground to put our trash. Uh, it's going to cost the same whether Rusty rents the equipment and does it himself or we have a company do it. Um, he covers that back up. He doesn't need a scrape to pull it. Uh, I think he's tried to use the scraper for both when he had it, but he wouldn't go lease the scraper just to cover it. They could use that fronting loader. That would be uh, maybe extra cost. What's the cost of that piece of equipment if we owned it? I'm just curious. 400000 so, 400000 That's a pretty big chunk of change, yeah. but you get at least a purchase. It was $150,000 and $300,000 right. $200,000. Yeah. Yeah, and the problem with lease to purchase, we just could never keep it busy enough to justify I, I all the oh, yeah, yeah, right. right. A yes. lot of things have happened lately. Like, um, I've watched the price of that scraper go up every year. So, so just because it's, well, I, I don't remember what it was this year, 20 that you budgeted. 25 or something. 22, or so 22 there's no guarantee it won't be 25 or That's 30 right. the next few years. So, right. doing it now for whatever, 70, 75, 000. right, might actually save the county money, yeah. Um, yeah. even yeah. if you could get it. Right. That's that you, right now you can't even get it. Yeah. yeah, that was Rusty and I. That's what started the whole conversation. Is one, we can't get it, and two, what's it going to cost next year to rent a scraper? Because right. he's looking at finishing this trench over a three-year period. So in two more years, right. it could be well, 30 you grand. you can show that price, right. I mean, on your budget. Right. It's, Projected. It's, anyway. Well, and even the past ones. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. So... Um, if we think it, at some point we have a serious discussion about funding it outside of the current budget, then that's a whole other conversation to have. No problem. Uh, the other thing is, we didn't hire Rusty to run a scraper. And we shouldn't get comfortable with that because that's not what we hired him to do. In my next opinion. guy may not be able to well, run Well, that's exactly race. right. Or might say, "What are you crazy? I'm not riding that bone breaker." Or we got to pay a lot more to have something. Exactly. Like so uh, this will be probably the last expense on this current landfill map because the next expense should be on the new, the big new pit, uh, the new plat, the new, yeah. uh, the whole new pit. So. Um, I've got those figures at home, the exact footage in the office. I can't quote it to you. Uh, it seemed like there was like 700 feet left. Um, and I would think if we got thinking that with a $70,000 price in our mind, we'd be pretty close. I, I appreciate Ken's offer to come talk to us. Can be, and, and I would encourage that because you, you guys know a whole lot about this kind of thing, and I truly do not. So I need to learn. So I would like to hear what's involved and why it's seventy-five thousand, how long it takes. Right. I'd like to see a picture of what a spray even looks like. I mean, I hate to be stupid. <laughs> I drive to the stupid. airport when no, they were doing it. Come on, Jay. Uh, <laughs> but you know what I'm trying to yeah. say. Yeah. An expert could come tell us, and, and you may go, aha, I didn't realize that, or something like that. I, I, I don't mind spending an hour or two with an expert telling us, here's how it would work, right. here's how it could go. So that's yeah. just my, my thought. Yeah. I'm, right a little, I'm a little goosey only because it's probably unwarranted in this case, but in my experience, you start talking to, a, they made rules in the government after the fact. They used to have a company like Lockheed would do systems engineering to project the work. Then they'd go bid on it along with others, and then, then they, the other companies protested. Finally, the government says no more. 
Um, Your point's well taken. But, you know, I, we're I getting in bed with that. Kent pretty heavy uh, in that thought. And then you could get somebody saying, well, Kent got it. How come he got it? He could talk to us too much. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in the construction business, we call those pre-bid conferences, and everybody's invited. Everybody's so. invited, so maybe you have uh, a workshop and you invite. Uh, uh, do we have other other companies yeah. we're aware of that yeah. could do up this? here? Uh, yeah, Ed Lyons, for example, has three companies within Custer County. Beside them. Yes. and I would I would agree with what you're saying. I would say we got Ed and uh, Fred White table. Does it. Uh, invite people who could do this job to the and listen to them and if one of them wants to punch the other in the nose because they didn't agree with them that's their yeah. business but yeah i i agree i really appreciate what you say i hadn't I really thought that. through all that uh these pre-bid conferences there's a reason they have them so everybody gets so everybody's exactly on the same, the same information number right. one they get it at the same time number two and they all have the opportunity to ask questions sure i don't think this project is complicated enough to have a pre-bid Conference. I think we could explain all of that in our yeah, uh, RFP for this job I and get too. by without it. So That's why that, I don't know that we need that to actually respect, talk. To I'd say probably that. we shouldn't have a meeting with. Yeah, 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 I, I know. Yeah. If he was the only one enough. in the county, it'd be different. Yeah, but and I think so. we know enough about we could trust. If you put out for bid anyway, they're going to compete. That price will probably come so down. Question. Yeah. A couple questions I have. Do we know the scope of the project when yep. it's yeah. done? Yep. Um, if we know that, then why don't we go ahead and um, put in a um, request for proposal in the newspapers and let's see what happens. Yeah, I don't think it hurt, now what, hurt no, how, What's the timing on this, really? Because uh, he's got X months. There's not really. Not urgent, I don't No, know. it's just. Obviously, he was budgeting twenty-two thousand a year over three years to finish that. Yeah. Uh, yeah I was thinking so. too. You get you open up a trench, and now you got to maintain that trench. You, you, you got issues with having the open pit. I don't know. What yeah, it and, would be. and the offset to that is if we open that trench now, then we'll have material to cover and yeah. seal that trench, yeah. like which that. we don't have right now. Right. We were in trouble with trying to seal that old trench up as we go. So, <clears throat> yeah, I think it's a good plan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Put on by it. consent, yeah, we'll move forward. I'll try to get some traction going in that area. And Why don't we just ask Rusty to, uh, at some point, when it's right, present when we need to go right. actually put it out. Right. Yeah. Give I'll us time to run and take a look. Good. Good, good. Uh, okay. So let's move on then. Um, consideration of the public health nurse lease contract with the clinic. I just got a call from Melissa. She didn't know this was on the agenda. It is. No, I'm sorry. No. I'm talking about a different document. So let's go ahead with this. Um, yeah, what does this mean? Anything, <clears throat> Councilor, anything, any developments on this lease with the clinic? No, I haven't heard anything else since uh, and you faxed that order to Lisa Drew, which was at least a week ago. Right. I guess. And I haven't heard anything. All right. And nobody said we can't get out of the lease. No, and we're still this. proceeding on the theory of we're, we're paid up through the end of the month. Um, we gave 10 days notice um, because we do feel there's good cause. If they ever challenge it, I think. 30 days notice. Well, we actually gave 30 days notice. We're only required to give 10 days right. notice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We met the 10 day notice right now. Um, <clears throat> so go ahead, sir. You said you had a comment. Yeah, I do. I'd really thought about this. I have a lot of angst over it. Um, I understand that um, public health nurse has had discussions with the clinic, and there was discussion of maybe splitting the two thousand extra dollars, and we pay for an extra month, and they absorb a month. That was just if we go with the three month notice. I have a terrible problem with that. And I'm just going to read the comments that I wrote because it's been on my mind. Um, you know, but for the hostile work environment, we would never have been moving in the first place. So this was precipitated at their problem. They caused this. We weren't out looking. They caused it because there was a, you know, in our employees' um, opinion, there was a hostile work environment. This move has been very expensive for us. Um, even though the rent is the same, we had to buy supplies, carpeting, wood, etc. Um, Chairman Flower has put in 
I can't tell you how many untold hours of personal doing this, which I really commend you for. Thank you. Um, personally, I feel the county should have paid someone to do it because I don't think this fault, kind of like Rusty, when you just say a minute ago, it really doesn't fall on your shoulders, and I really appreciate you stepping up and doing that and saving the taxpayers a bunch of money. Um, Thank you. So, a lot of people pitched in to do something that we were basically forced into doing because of the work environment. Um, if anything, and I know this is this is just rhetoric I'm going to say now, I think the clinic should pay for our costs since they forced us to be the one to move. So the additional expenses that it cost us to go into a new space, the rent is the same, but there's more to it than just the rent, carpet, furniture, and all that kind of stuff. So what is that? I think they should pay that, but I'm not I'm not proposing that that's rhetoric because I'm not looking to hey, create a hostile a hostility between us and them. But I am I, I guess what I'm saying is I am strongly opposed to giving them any more than the one month excuse me, the one month's rent during the thirty or ten day notification period that we gave them and I would strongly urge us not to approve any I thought that's rules. where we were. Why are so we thinking we here's owe why I'm going to tell you, and I think Alyssa might have Stuck overstepped her bounds slightly. Um, I wasn't going to bring it up as a chance. Um, she mentioned to Lisa Drew that, well, why don't we just go ahead and, it was a two month, $2,000, two months worth of rent that um, was in question, whether it's one month or three months notice, so it's two months there of question. Lisa said, I mean, excuse me, uh, Alyssa said, let's just split it, and Lisa Drew said, okay. Or maybe it was the other way around. No, uh, Alyssa brought it up. Alyssa brought it up. That's what she I brought it up because she felt that Lisa was saying, you owe me for three months? Is that what yes. she was, where she yes. felt? Did Lisa and actually she, say she that? She was negotiating a settlement. Uh, I, I, I feel so. that that was beyond her scope. And I'm not chastising her for that. She was trying to I'm do the right thing. She was trying to do the right thing. But I feel we should usurp that, go above her, and say, I'm sorry, but we're not going to agree oh, with you. Clint says we got caught. You, you didn't have the authority to do that. And I don't feel we should pay the that's clinic that. any more than what we've already agreed to do. So that's what, that's what precipitated my entire I didn't rely there was those. So that's what got me to this point where I go, I'm really, really opposed to doing this, and I'm sorry it may hurt um, <coughs> the public health nurses' feelings because we're overriding what it, it is. Well, I had a conversation with her. Okay. He said it will, but I feel that that's our responsibility, not hers. Yeah, when she communicated to us, <coughs> she had had that conversation with Lisa. I said, man. It's really not your authority to do that. We're the one signed. At least she said, you're exactly right. I overstepped. Good. I said, the last thing either one of these three commissioners want to do is hurt your spirit over this deal. She says, trust me, I understand I overstepped. No harm, no foul. We she sure don't want to get crossways with the clinic. Right. And that makes me feel much better because yeah. I didn't want to hurt yeah. Alyssa's feelings. And I really don't want to get crossways with the clinic. Um, look, it is a bo both the clinic and the public health are services we provide to the community. We need to work together as in a cooperation, and, and I'm sorry that there was this personality issue that went on, but... Um, yeah, we don't I, need it to, that personality issue cost them taxpayer money. Right, and, and it, you know, I, I, I just feel very comfortable with our public health in our own spot now doing her own thing, not on the foothills of the clinic. So I, I really appreciate Clint and the way he's handled it, and I think we need to just follow what he's doing. So how do we feel Lisa thinks now, Clint? You think that's going to fly? <clears throat> well, from a legal point of view, the question would be whether Alyssa had apparent authority to act as the agent for the county in negotiating some kind of a settlement. I mean, it's clear that I was the one that was representing the county on this. There wasn't any indication that Alyssa had some authority to do this. Right. That's, that can't be held against us. I mean, even if Lisa Drew brings it up and say, sorry, 
you know, she didn't have the authority to yeah, do that. Yeah, she, so, she would understand. And my feeling is that we ought to just stay where we're at on this. I mean, since that's on the table, I think we need to, to make it clear that is not an option uh, for a settlement. There is no settlement on this. They, we paid what we're going to pay, and that's it. She, we never even considered it. So well, I don't know if uh, at this point... <coughs> Whether you want me to contact Lisa again uh, and explain this, or whether you want Alyssa to talk to her, and well, say, I'm sorry, I have the authority to do it. Right, um, and that's that's your. The last call. conversation I had with Alyssa was she was going to go back to Lisa and explain to her that she misspoke, that she did not have the authority to do that. Right. I don't know if she's done that yet or not. So <clears throat> let me follow up with this afternoon. Okay, let me. If you need me to do something else, let me know. And, I'll, and if. She says, well, I totally really said, well, you already said, then certainly we go, right. go your route. So what does Clint have to do now? <clears throat> get Lisa, what's the next step? You we're waiting give her the, for a response. No, I don't have to do anything now. We right. say it's our position if they don't She's want to She's already got it. it. Right. They don't want, well, you know, we paid our month's rent. We're paid up through May. If they want to make an issue out of it, then yeah. they'll have to take the next step. I don't have right. to do Right, so we else. could just put our head down and just ignore it. Right. Up with right. Things, percent. Well, right now, we're planning on moving out on the 31st, and that's it. Right. Yeah. And leaving, I'm going to say, four to $500 worth of Internet service there right. uh, per month uh, yeah, for that's free. The other so I want to also, it's a little off track, but I had a conversation with our IT guy yesterday. He's shooting 80 megs down and 40 up to the new public health, wow. yeah. which is twice what they were getting at the clinic. Uh, when we got involved, it was it was four megs, so it's 20 times faster than it was before we shot a signal over to the clinic. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's going to be in good shape over there in the new new offices. Okay. Um, you good there? I mean, really, with no action, we don't have anything. We're just good. kind of in a holding pattern. So, right. um, <clears throat> and then while we're here, I, we could do this in public comment, I guess. But uh, Alyssa asked to have the EPR grant approval put on the agenda. It was my mistake. I forgot to do that. Uh, it's for eighteen thousand dollars. It's standard procedure, um, uh, emergency preparedness uh, and response grant. She gets it every year, but we have to sign it as the fiscal person. So if you want to try to hold off, we can. She was hoping we would uh, make a decision on it today. What's, why? What's that right? uh, well, it's dollars she needs to use. And I think she said part of the plan was to use this to hire a response coordinator. If we want to wait, we can. She just said, man, if there's any way you guys can do that, I need to get it back. I would minutes. like to approve it today if at all possible, but I certainly don't want to violate any open records laws or sunshine laws for the public to comment on it. Um, like That's a great said. reason why we couldn't do it, or should we wait? <clears throat> When's the next meeting? Next Thirty-first. Next. Thirty-first. Yeah. Week. Yeah, nine days. If it's really crucial, I think you could post it a twenty-four hour notice. Do it on Monday, if you need to get it done sooner. Monday's a holiday, I guess. Mm -hmm. But um, <clears throat> since it wasn't on the agenda, just to be complete, completely in compliance, I think we should wait on it. Okay. Okay. And if there's some urgency, she wants it sooner. We can get it posted sooner. Okay. Well, for sure, let's put the EPR grant on March or May 31st, and then I'll talk to her today. All right. And we'll go from there. Um, <clears throat> before moving to public comment, Commissioner Prince, you brought it up in comments about the recent letter we received from Ms. Howard. Do you want me to speak? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Um, I got a call last night from Commissioner Kanda. I, I was unaware of this, but I got the letter this morning that um, Cindy Howard, our emergency uh, manager, uh, is resigning. She's giving us um, three weeks' notice or more. June 7th. June 7th. Yeah. 7th. Yeah. Um, but also graciously 
stated that she would be willing to help us with transitions and other things that have been going on. So um, I would just like to say that um, she's been a tremendous asset to this community. Uh, I'm really sorry she's leaving. In fact, at uh, a meeting last night, um, we, will, we being Custer County, were complimented on how far along they are in emergency management procedures compared to most counties. Yeah, for a little county, if you made a big point, right. compared so to better than El Paso. So, so that directly reflects on Cindy Howard's ability and the way she handled things. I think this will certainly be a blow to the county. Um, she said she's doing this for personal reasons. She wants to move on. Um, and uh, I would just personally like to thank her for the outstanding job she has done. And I wish her the most, the very, very best in the future. Thank you, sir. Where's yeah, I, I intentionally deferred <coughs> uh, to you over Mr. Canada because I wanted Mr. Canada to kind of have the. Uh, the final on this thing because you come at it from a little different direction than either one of us with your conversation last night. So if you have anything you want to, yeah, she uh, she was very uh, firm about it. It was it tugged on her for quite a while. It took her a while, and she really came down to the realization that there's more to life. She's been here for four years. Uh, she wants to do more things with her family. And, uh, and pursue something a, a bit different. This is a, was a tough job, and as a matter of fact, what Jay pointed out is that uh, when she came onto the job, there were, there were 22 applicants that were considered. And it was a, you know, it's a stressful job, it's a heavy job, and she has done a great job. And she is well deserving of uh, taking the time to be with her family and take a different course. And she, she said it's, uh, it was a tough decision to make, but she was glad that we were here to, to, to listen. That's quite a lot. Yeah. She's not leaving the county. She's stepping uh, down. Right. All right. Yeah, she indicated in her letter, I believe, that some willingness to help with the transition on some grant work and whatever. She so, went above and beyond last uh, night by saying whatever it takes. Uh, she wants she? to make sure that the... Uh, Grants are not going to get lost in the weeds. She did point out uh, that she's been able to grow the grants to, for this position where other counties have lost money. She's been yeah. great. Well, we will take official action on this on uh, May 31. So I've asked Mary to put that on the agenda. Uh, but one or two at least bring that above board at this meeting and uh, we'll move forward. Yeah, so. good point. Okay. Uh, public comment. Oh. <laughs> Hearing none. Hey, uh, before uh, you do that, yeah, I've got a question, anything question for Jay. Uh, tomorrow I've got to take, or mute Tom, I've got to take my mom down to the hospital for minor surgery. Uh, there's an E911 meeting tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you're going to be there. Yeah. The house going to be there. All right. Yeah. We'll All right. Yeah. Um. Ah. It's at two o'clock. Oh, it's at two o'clock. Cliff Town Hall. At the town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the nicest fabulous. places to have a of a meeting. <laughs> you know, I, I was thinking like last. Well, last night's meeting because the food was a little bit different. But you know, like. Some of the other meetings the SAR, that we have in the yeah. SARS, I mean, we could go over there. Cliff is, is happy to use that building. You guys haven't been in that town hall. You ought to go. You can't go up there. Ah, too high. Really? Even we'll bring it down to you then. Yeah. 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 Why don't you come on up and we'll have a party and we'll tell him how it was. Yeah. We'll bring pictures next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, graduation May 26th, 2 p.m. <coughs> and then the Memorial Day service on May 27th at 10 a.m. I'm assuming we're all planning on going to that. Uh, and then <coughs> uh, planning and zoning interviews on the 28th. Uh, That's for them. We can sit in if we want. Yes. We're not interviewing. Yeah, we're not interviewing or asking any questions. <coughs> he said, you're welcome to come sit in if you so choose. 
So that's kind of what I've got on my calendar before we meet again on the 31st. Uh, but yeah, thanks for mentioning that, Bill, about uh, the 911 meeting. Certainly we're planning on going, but. Uh, you are not going to CCI, correct? I am. I am not going. You're not. You I are. Am. Yeah. Okay. As am I. Um, Mid-month meeting is in San Isabel in June, so. Yay, we get to eat. <laughs> need to remember that. I'm way slow. Kids Council sponsoring a picnic on June 9th at the Memorial Park East. Yeah, and Brad's would like us to attend, and I told him I would. Okay. All right. Any further public comment or items of discussion to come before the group? Yes, sir. Yes. I'm running out of gas. We have to leave. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> now you're gassed up again. I gassed up. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to go any further than that. Chair uh, entertainment. Uh, been moved and seconded to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion is whoops. <laughs>